Five, four, three, two, one, go! Oi, I saw that. If you go up to the loft today, you're sure of a big surprise. Hey, you've had it away if with the If you go up stick. to the loft today, you'll never believe your eyes. For every train there ever was, has gathered there together because today's the day that Jenny does the Monday Club. Yay! Well, a big hello to you guys. Welcome back to another Monday Club. And after a two plus year absence, Les is back. We've Hi. let him out from the modelling dungeon. So, yeah. like, for good behaviour. Now, now, don't do that I again. won't do it again. It's worse than going into Facebook channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, it's been really hot weather. And um, we've actually installed an extractor fan. Used to be into Massey Ferguson, but not really big on them now. Um, but it's sucking all the air out. <laughs> so a big hello to Flymo Channel 1, Ham Shackleton, SJ Railfish, Richard Swiderski, Simon Train's Mother Railway Showcase, Gone Loco, Alan Pollock, uh, S. Eel, Peter Jackson, Cheadle Heath, one of our Jenny Cook Monday Club uh, members, uh, Ruben Ashwell, Valleys 56XX, Patrick Ling, Nigel Cole, Wan Gok, uh, Harry Sedgwick, Warbler Productions, Richard Swiderski, Blue Hi, Star Warbler. Productions, yeah. uh, Tom L, Sarah Davis, says, uh, says someone's put 50p in the meter. Well, um, thankfully, DCC Concepts sorted out my power box, which had, um, uh, had a fault. Uh, can't fault DCC Concepts though, they sent out a replacement and I had it within a couple of days back up and running. So fingers crossed, all is now well. Uh, West Highland Terrier 37, hi to you. Timber Surf, who is lurking. Um, Alex Dent asks, how are you guys? How are you, Les? I'm fine, thank you very much. And hi to everybody. I'm <laughs> struggling to read all the writing, but hello everybody. It is quite small to us. So, uh, Rolf, oh, don't say Rolf Harris. Who said Rolf Harris? <laughs> Who said Rolf Harris? Iron Horse Railways. Oh my word! <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you can, can you guess what, what it is, is yet? Yeah. Well, I always had the problem of either looking like Peter Sutcliffe, Rolf Harris, or Jerry Adams. <laughs> <I> can't win. <laughs> oh dear. Well, yeah. Well, my parents did one worse. They bought a Rolf Harris painting oh. a week before he was arrested, and oh, everything yeah. came out. <laughs> well, I saw a few of his limited editions over the years, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Although apparently it shouldn't affect the value. The values um, held up. But um, anyway, hi everybody. Whether I look like Rolf Harris or not. <laughs> So, big hello to Southern Train Girl, Ian Parker, Krista Duke, Dongit's Mother Railway, uh, Ian O'Brien, uh, Sue at Putnam Junction, Iron Horse Railways, of course. Oh, thank you, Cupboard Monkey. Yeah, the Cupboard Monkey has uh, brought us up some plates for their is takeaway pizza, winging its way towards us. Um, but uh, West Highland Terrier 37 says Rainbow Cast. Yeah, it's uh, we're all really nice and colourful. And... Um, yeah, so uh, you you have visited since lockdown because you at the start you were still in the area. So whilst we were doing the Monday yeah. Club, you were still about, and yeah. we'd we'd do a checkpoint Charlie handover at we the did, door yeah. occasionally yeah. when you would come back and you were dropping off. That was the back, the back scenes. scenes and everything, and, and line them up outside. And Zoe would collect them because you would often be out of work, and then you'd yes, yeah, and then I had to in. fit them, and then we'd measure, and um, I'd send you photographs yeah. and measurements. <laughs> it was all a bit Heath Robinson, but we got there in hey, the it's, end. It's, 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 come up. Yep. it's turned out nice again. Turned out nice. Huh? So actually, it's um, well, you came a couple of weeks ago, yes. but you're not not for the Monday Club. Um, so you actually you finished off the little bit where they didn't yep. quite match yep. up. So, so how does it? I mean, you I guess you you never saw it properly in the context of on the railway. Well, well how, how I'm you... I'm pleased with it certainly. Um, no, I'm using, pleased with it. Definitely. Using sort of secondhand stuff or mm. things that I'd taken off my old layout that were destined to. I'm not knowing what I was going to do with them. Yeah, but yeah. Like, cut those down and make them really thin. For the back scene and yeah they have worked out extremely well yeah i mean i love this area yeah, that, here that one and that is the best because of the chamfer of the roof they don't work quite as well mm. but you know but it's like bad. what can you do you can't 
The only thing that I would go for is actually have clouds and stuff coming higher up. Maybe yeah. another strip that's just yeah. sky and clouds. But um, a lot of a lot of Weir Yard was very much cobbled together without a plan. Yes. It, it's kind of how I work. In my head, I've got a rough idea. And are, are you a bit the same? Well, with my, my garage conversion to this radio railway studio, yes. I have looked at planned books, particularly shelf layouts, American shelf layouts. Mm. I've got my own ideas of what I want to do, but it's kind of stop, start, stop, start, because everything sort of mm. um, goes around what's being done to the house at the moment, waiting yeah, for yeah. the builders to come and do jobs. So stuff's been stored in the garage and has to come out. Finally, everything that's in the garage now is for the model railway, mm. but I've now got to figure out a kind of track plan. Mm. So, But again, I, I can't work from a plan. Mine's sort yeah. of... Yeah, I, I can't draw the pen. When I did an, an article on Weir Yard that went into Railway Modeler, yeah. they asked for a plan. And I said, uh, I don't have one. Oh, well, can you not draw one? It's like, I don't have a plan because I can't draw them. <laughs> and I ended up, I had to cobble something together. And I said, look, it, here's something for your artist to use as a prompt. Yeah. But actually, it's, I was like this horrible pencil drawing. And it just, I can't do plans. Oh. So I have in my head a general sense of where I'm going, yeah. and that's what I work to. Um, but I knew I wanted at least four trains running at all times. And what I will say to you is, You've having that now, well, um, four, right. four trains that run continuously, and then I've subsequently added three more that do like the pendulum out yeah. the back. Um, There's six going out at the moment, aren't there? There's three over here. And there four, should be, there's four five. running round and three doing a pendulum, because this one over here, if we go to to this angle, this one over here is also doing its ABC thing. Um, it's just sort of at the waiting period. And what I would say to you is make sure you have a reasonable number that you can just set to run and leave yeah, run. That's what and and to get with here. hindsight, mm -hmm. um, there's one little bottleneck going round there. I could have had five continuous running if I'd have actually planned it better. But um, so we've got um, David, it's my mother, always says Hornby Lion inspiring. Absolutely, we've had quite a development. Have you been following Titgate? <laughs> I've heard, I've not followed it that closely, but uh, yeah, they're a little bit naughty trying to jump the gun um, and not make well, sure all the ducks were in a line, as it you were. You know, they had to issue the grovel apology, apology. Yeah, yeah. yes. And then they've announced a just a lion set, not the Titfield Thunderbolt, they've, they've learned from that, yeah. but they're doing a lion set, uh, which they announced the same day, actually, within a few hours of having to issue the apology. Um, it'd be interesting to see where they're up to. We've not actually seen anything uh, publicly from Hornby as to where they actually are with the um, with the, the production of that model. Um, Alfonso La Pulsa says Titgate. <laughs> That's what people dubbed it. And um, Ian Parker says sixteen coaches on the Deltic. Um, and yeah, this is the Acura scale Deltic, which I was really looking forward to showing you guys um, last week, and of course we couldn't. Um, because we had the um, the issue with the train stopping, but that is the Acura Scale Deltic. Now it's there, uh, running with sixteen Mark Ones in the main. I think they're, they're all Mark Ones except there's a, a Hornby okay. Gresley restaurant car in there in the blue grey. Um, everything else is Mark Ones, including there's a Mark One Pullman and a Mark One TPO. Um, but I actually on the test for the uh, for the video review. It managed 32 without even breaking a sweat um, and actually the, the couplings between the coaches could not cope with the amount of drag so it was actually pulling the coaches off the track. Ollie's Trains Game he says Jenny who do you think the next PM will be? Um, we don't do politics. Yeah I don't know <laughs> there will be somebody it'll be one of the 11 people but I don't speculate to be honest. Um, they're all as bad as each other whether they're Conservative, Liberal, Labour, wouldn't mm. trust anyone as far as I could spit. Mm. But yeah, the Acura Scale Delta, I have to say, an amazing model. And if I can find... Where are we? So... We're over there. And it's fu fully sound fitted. I love the horn. But um, as we heard from uh, 
last week, a curious scale saying that the manor, actually let's turn that off because it is quite loud, um, the manor and the class 92, is it the ma not the manor, the 37 and the 92 are um, incoming and will likely arrive about the same time. So if you've ordered 37s and 92s, then quite frankly, you are going to have an expensive month. Um, Martin Searsma says, Jenny nearly wound up with an Escher paradox. Um, what happened? Did you get the, the weird thing where um, it's sort of, you get like the Doctor Who effect on the screen? Uh, Don gets model railway says, that bodes well for my 92. Yeah, um, really looking forward to them. They're a bit more modern than I tend to go, but really, really looking forward to them. And Warbler Production says, I, lo I love my pair of Deltics. <laughs> <laughs> they are simply... Sorry, I had to do the, the uh, Father Jack. All oh, right. Um, but, uh, yeah, they are great models. Uh, Acura Scale have announced that there are going to be uh, another run of Deltics. They've proven so popular. Right. Uh, Southern Train Girl, uh, hi to you. J94 as well. Jerry BVR. DJK666, uh, George as well, says, Hi Jenny Zoning Lairs, I bet it's baking in that loft, Scorchio in Devon. Not too bad with the fan down here. Yeah, they, the, the fans do help, and the extractor fan we fitted has really taken the edge off it, but it is warm, I'll say that much. Um, we did fit the computer with an extra fan, so hopefully that'll do better but david it's my model railway says that sound fitted deltic for sale on ebay it went for 510 pounds they're actually changing hands for silly money um uh joshua w56 says what's the best seed to use on minecraft for sorder um i couldn't help you there to be honest alfonso la pulsa suggests billy's replacement government um, well, if Billy was running the place, all I would say is that it would be mandated that all amplifiers would have to go to 11. Um, so the, the, the Billy's replacement party, all well, speakers well, go to 11. Alienated any manufacturer. Who would you say is your most favourite manufacturer, model, are we locals and stuff? online thank you that's from iron, iron horse, horse railways so what about you i don't really have a favorite manufacturer i i just i like locomotives mm -hmm. so i'll buy gauge master i'll buy backman i'll buy hornby i'm not always um the top of the range sometimes i've got the the railroad ones depends on the details are they saying that your hst turned out nice with a bit yeah. of a scrub up yeah. and well, dcc a, fitting a brilliant job on that so they've all got good points, they've all got bad points. I know Hornby come in for a lot of stick, um, but they're a company trying to do, yeah, to cater for everybody. And it's like, you know, the old saying, you can please somebody some of the time, but you can't please everybody all of the time. So I think yeah. they've got to be given, you know, a bit of leeway. Yes, they've made a few mistakes, a few mm. cock ups. Uh, but generally, I, I like Hornby, I like Gage Master, I like Backman, I like them all, um, but I'm not that finicky about the. Yeah accuracy sometimes because it's the, it's the model world mm. that i'm more interested in necessarily than the actual details of the locomotives oh my word combat bunny not seen you in for ages um good to see you so don't forget to hit the like button absolutely so do please tickle the like button share the stream on social media let's get the word out and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so do please do that and uh I'd also like to big up to uh, Ken Patterson and all the crew at What's Neat This Week who just celebrated their 200th episode. Wow. So, um... That's more than Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I thought Crossroads no. went for a long time. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Mm. No, well done. Excellent. But, I mean, in terms of favourite stuff, um, I have to say it does change over time for me. Um, I went through a phase where it was like all Backman all the time, but then Hornby pulled it back, and now we've got a Cura scale and Dapol as we've well. Got a healthy market with all of them. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, one of the big worries, though, is if they're like trying to slice the pie too thinly, and you reach a point where is there enough money um, to actually um, 
modelers be able to afford all the stuff that is a problem. and you know, problem. is it getting spread thinner and thinner? Well, wages aren't keeping pace with the cost of living. Well, I don't know. I just read that um, some of the unions have uh, managed to bully companies into like a, a, a Cadbury's 17.5% pay rise. But the trouble with that is then inflation goes up, so nobody actually gets a pay rise. You, you know, you have to keep up with the Joneses just to stay where you were before. Fine. Eric Christiansen, hello to you in the USA, and of course all of the other, um, uh, all of our other US and around the globe uh, watchers, and of course I, I know quite a few people. Raymond Legs there as well, also from USA. Um, uh, I'm guessing also what's neat this week, watchers as well. Um, Raymond Legs says Pico and Pico, uh, sorry, Pico and Pico both bring back TT gauge. As uh, Pico and Pico. Uh, Hellion as well have announced the Class 31, I believe, as well. Pico was half owner of Berliner TT for a while, furnishing mostly the power packs, track signals, and buildings. Uh, Simon Trains Mother Railway showcased this wonderful 200 episode from What's Neat This Week. Nice to see a cameo by yourself, Jenny, at the end. Yes, um, uh, I, I did film a little cameo for Ken, congratulating him and the crew. Um, Mark Wilson is looking for an inflatable pig for his uh, Stewart's <laughs> Lane thing. Um, I, 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 I reckon you could probably get something like the little, um, you can get like the little comedy pencil erasers maybe. Uh, you might be able to get one that's the perfect miniature size. I hear the sound I of hear, pizza approaching. You hear pizza? I can smell it. Can you? Oh, you've got the fan blasting at you. Thank you, Cupboard Monkey. Oh, thanking you. Right. What have we got here? Oh, we've got chips and everything. Oh. So... <laughs> Hello! <laughs> oh, they're not very generous with the chips. Oh, oh well, oh. apparently the Cupboard Monkey's got the rest, so there we go. There's some plates down there. Oh. Mm. There you are. <laughs> you want to see these again? Right, what about the pizza? Um, just um, grab it slice by slice. Should be... Um, oh, that's wow. the good stuff. This is probably garlic bread underneath. Let's just um, have a look. The garlic bread with cheese from this place is really, really good. There you oh, go. Right. Yeah, try some of this whilst it's hot. It's amazing when it's hot. So yes, yeah, tuning in to People Eating Live. <laughs> Mm. Talk to the nice people whilst you stuff my face. Right, right. nice people. <laughs> We've been asking questions. Um, uh, I've come so quickly to try and read it. Um, <laughs> I need some new glasses. <laughs> Making people hungry. <laughs> Raymond Legg says it's harder to kill a loco with an open frame motor than it is one with a can motor, in my experience. I must admit. The only motors that I've ever had um, uh, burn themselves out are the completely sealed can motors. So I don't know whether that is um, related to uh, whether there's a, a reliability issue. All these trains gaming says, is that pizza? Yes, it, it is, is indeed. Yeah, mm. very nice. So tell us about your modelling at the moment. Well, um, for those of you who don't know. <clears throat> I did used to live only half a mile from Jenny, mm. but in 2020, yeah, two years ago, I moved house down to Leicestershire, a um, little place called Wittick, um, near, um, near Colville, mm -hmm. and I've um, downsized my house, so we've been waiting for the best part of the last two years to get hold of builders to come and do jobs on it, um, getting hold of builders, decent builders, um, plasterers, electricians, plumbers, it's like pulling rocking horse teeth, it's so hard well, to Plus it's been during lockdown as well, which I'm guessing has made it really it doubly did hard. did make it difficult. However, um, the garage that was is no longer a garage, but is a, a railway studio of sorts. I have the garage door all blocked up, brand new rubberized roof put on, everywhere insulated, plasterboarded, uh, and painted so it's starting to look the bee's knees mm. uh, it's a case now of trying to organize some of the stuff that I managed to save from the old not lobia some of the dioramas and modules that I made mm. they're all installed but they've got to have a lot of linking pieces done to them uh, and it'll be on three layers um, a top uh, layer that will be sort of a roundy roundy that goes all around the circumference of the garage garage is about 25 foot by 10 foot well, that's going to be quite a decent size mm. 
three or four tracks if I possibly can. And then the other two layers, which are about 15 inches each, um, depth below the, each one, that is basically an end-to-end -end from one end on one of the tiers all the way around through a helix onto the lower level to the other end. Um, but this is where all the fun will start because I've got about two foot off the ground first of all <laughs> and then two foot, three foot something or other and then the top layer. It's not quite as easy as I had it in my head mm. but I will get there. So, so how much space have you lost? Because well, how do you know um, the not lobia layer? It was huge. It occupied the entire basement underneath it was, the it shop. It was 600 square feet now, give or take 20 odd feet. This one, because I've gone for a different concept, um, I wanted to have as much space in there as possible, but I couldn't fill the whole room mm. like I did down in the basement. So I've gone for these shelf layouts, which are only two foot wide, probably a similar width to the back end there of your layout. Mm. So each one will be two foot wide all the way round. So if you do all the multiplications and everything, 25 foot, 10 foot, 25 foot, 10 foot. But over three levels, over three that's le a lot of... That's a lot of track and a lot of scope for scenic work, of different styles, um, different settings. So I've got my work cut out. I just, I just sometimes feel that I spent 13 years building something in the basement and unfortunately that 13 years has been lost was and wasted. That, was that a big, um, uh, when you realised you had to take it all out, it was, was there a, a period where you had to kind of a denial and then you I'm had to... I'm still in denial to some extent because yes, it was a, a horrible feeling, you know, mm. you, you, there's certain things that you could save quite easily, the track, the trucks, mm. um, wagons, buildings and things, but all the creative landscape, you just couldn't. Mm. And I'd spent literally hundreds, probably even thousands of pounds over the years doing the various effects that I was working on. However, you know, needs must, it had to just be pulled to pieces. But I, I know from my own experience that the more that I build, the, the better I feel I get mm. at things. So in some respects, are you embracing the yeah. new challenge that you're going to be building something new and able to address maybe things that you were never quite happy I with I hope before? so. I mean, I've become... I've had some depressing times um, over the last two years, you know, when you just feel that nothing has happened building-wise, and I keep in the back of my mind, because some people know, some people don't, I've got cancer, it's manageable, but I have this little nagging at the back of my head, come on, you need to get on with things, you need to get on with things, mm. because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I sort of bolster through all of that, and I'm hoping now that I can get going. One thing that's helped me over the last few sort of months have been various projects that I've got involved with you and one of the projects I did with WWS for a, a disused sidings diorama mm. um, that was for a challenge just in June just for the pure sake of doing something creative and that was on the the War World Scenic yeah, um, uh, Facebook group yeah so I know a lot of you guys as well I'm guessing also had a go um, at that so a big hello to Francis Wadsworth, um, Dominic Zed, our Kickline correspondent, great to see you. John JMC says, greetings from Ikea in Sheffield. Oh. Hope you're all well. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Hamel Down Model Railway, good evening to you. Peter Jackson, Cheadle Heath. Um, Barnabas Junction says, my loft is unbearable today. Registered 38 Celsius oh. up there. Oh my word, you have my sympathies. It doesn't quite get that hot up here. Um, and the heat tends to be, because it's well insulated, it survives the outside heat quite well, but the heat that's inside can't escape. We've fitted an extractor fan today, and it's taking the edge off, excuse me, but I have to say, I'm still quite hot. How are you feeling? I'm not doing too bad. Mm. That's one of the good things about the garage conversion. Mm. I decided I wanted to make it into a proper room, because... Looking at some of the, the garage conversions, particularly in America where they've got lots of space mm. and the railway rooms that they make, they were phenomenal. Oh god, and yeah, wanted, they have huge layers. I wanted to have something like that. So the garage was okay, but I decided no, I'm going to put a new roof on it first of all because I didn't want to spend the kind of money I was going to spend on it. And, you know, a few months later, mm. the water started coming in. But the new roof, the rubberized roof, the insulation that's gone into there has made the the garage space, the studio, so cool and comfortable. I've been in there working on and off 
over the last few days and it's been really hot. Right. And it's probably the coolest place in our house because we have a south really? facing south facing garden. So mm. all the rooms on the back get really hot from the sun coming in. Mm. And my wife's um, room upstairs I've been doing, the studio up there for her, her crafts and her embroidery and everything else, is really, really hot. Mm. Now that's insulated, but it's not got the same kind of insulation I've had to put in the garage. Right. So insulation does keep you, keep you warm it in works winter both and ways. cool in summer. I always say to a lot of people that it's, it, you know, it, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Not only does it keep you warm in winter, but it helps cool the house down in summer. But there's only so much you can do. Now, um, I did see a comment uh, there. Ian Parker asks, Les, is there points on the helix to the second level? Are you going to branch no. off? No. I bought this helix uh, second hand. It was a good, I thought it was a good bargain. Mm. But it had double track going around and it had seven layers. And I knew I wanted one, but I didn't need it as a double track. So, no, it's literally just a single track that goes up from one level all the way up onto the next level, goes round to all the all the stations and the port and things that I'm creating mm. and then the same train will come back and sort of go down so there's no points on the helix whatsoever it's mm. literally it's just a circle of track going up that's the idea at the moment but like with everything as and no you, plan survives first contact no, with no. the enemy. so there'll be um, there will be alterations but I'm trying to keep points down to a minimum as possible mm. although I say that I think I've probably got 70 or 80 points at least on the rest of the layout but i, I always recommend on things like helices um points on them are asking for something to go wrong so if you can avoid them always a good idea uh i think sj railfish earlier on quite a way back i did spot asking oh so do brits eat chips with pizza brits eat chips with everything, everything. You know, we um, we make chip sandwiches. We make um, you know we'll have curry with chips. Chinese food with the uh, with chips. I have to admit, the best chips I ever had uh, were in Bruges because they double fry them or triple fry them or something like that. And with mayo, the mayo that they have, they were beautiful. Mm. Um, so you just joined us. Sorry, our tea came late, but. Um, yeah, because I've only just come up from Bolton tonight, um, <coughs> 100 odd mile drive. Yes, you, you've literally driven straight here. You arrived about half an hour before um, we came up here. Yeah. So, but you know, it's, we're filming, uh, you know, everybody knows now that we're filming for Hornby and Model World. Um, we've done the first filming block. Um, this week we're doing the second and final filming block. We obviously can't talk about um, the project that we're working on, um, but you, you'll just have to wait for when Hornby and Model World goes out. Don't ask me when it's going out, because I don't know. I would suspect, like last time, probably in the November, um, but I don't know. Really don't don't know. Um, Bletchton High Level this is my station house was 44 degrees when I got in from work. Must address the, pro the problem. That is really, really hot. Yeah. Um, Matt Oville, a big hi to you, says, I wish you could have been around in good old days of steam. And I think a lot of people would, but I, I, I suspect that, that if you were there, for a lot of people, it wasn't quite as nostalgic as you think it was. Uh, I know a lot of people said they were very dirty. Wondering where all the rolling stock has gone. It's probably in the storage side, is it? Oh, well, hold on. A different a different angle so there's a lot of rolling stock um, so that's my dad's account and um, so Les Kirk is my dad um, Skipsy trains really great to see you hope hope you well so good evening Jenny Zoe Les sorry I'm late travel lodge cafe a bit busy tonight it's roasting in London I bet it is is it cooler up there no surprised you made it into the loft um, again as you said we fitted in an extractor fan um, and it is it is taking the edge off it it's not perfect but um, it is taking the edge off Gus Hadley the lunatic from uh, from <laughs> is that ammo or Arno it's difficult to tell Amo, I think AMO says hey Jenny hey to you says I caught the podcast Friday I am amazed at Zoe I know Zoe is great um, Henry Cummins, hello to you. We're getting a lot of new names as well. Don't forget to share the stream out. 
and tickle the like button. Also, uh, we've got that exclusive Monday Club Wagon still available to order. You'll find the details in the description box underneath the, um, the video box on YouTube. And uh, all orders are being fulfilled by Rails of Sheffield. So you can order with confidence. And they are due, um, I think they told me around September, beginning of September. Eric Christiansen says, my shop is shaded all day by huge trees and stay cool, it stays cool in the hottest weather, but in winter it takes a lot to cool. Uh, I, pre I presume to heat up. Um, but yeah, it, it's an, anywhere that's shady um, is quite pleasant this time of year. Mm. We need to synchronise our scoffing. <laughs> Ian said, no more sheds, so I've bought two Mercedes and a remo <laughs> removal lorry. Now the on the drive. Oh right, so he's, building, he's using them as sheds, <laughs> but they're not sheds. How's it going Ian? <laughs> Have you got anywhere yet for um, the Cambridge Model Railway or Miniature Wonderland? Alright, he's doing... He's yeah, doing yeah. Mm. he's got um, 100 trains Facebook page, which is well, well worth going on and having a look. Hmm. Valley's 56XX, absolutely, thanks for reminding us. Rails have an eBay 20% off sale at Ooh. the moment. And that applies to everything on their eBay store. Um, I think it's maximum three transactions, but do check before you buy. And a maximum saving of £60. We've got a meat feast topping, I think, haven't we? Um, garlic yeah, meat bread? feast, garlic bread with cheese and chips. Um, Raymond Lexus, RIP chat reply. Oh, what, what's gone wrong? Um, Krista Duke says, I've got sunburn in the shade. To be honest, I think I'm getting sunburn just here under the light. It's, it is quite warm. Ian Parker's on layout number 86. That is a lot of layouts. Um, I think I'm only up to about um, 16, 17, something like that. Ian, um, building them and storing them. To eventually put them all together in this huge, ah, so um, like the the modular thing. Yeah, I know a lot of. Well, there might be individuals. I don't really know, um, but he's hoping to do mm. an equivalent idea of the miniature Wonderland that Germany have got, but mm. it's going to take a long time. Luke's model train says hello, Jenny and Les. Big hello to you. Hi, Luke. Um, hey, and Raymond Leg says Shout Factory is releasing a Jim Button DVD in September in the US. It's not the first film though. Um, Matt Ovell says, I already spent too much on rail sales. Surprised they have anything left. Oh, well, I've seen Wales' storeroom. It's like <laughs> the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, where they're oh, wheeling yeah. the ark and it's just all boxes. Yeah. It's like it's like that. Patrick Ling asks, what's in the news this week? Well, I guess the big thing has been the, uh, the whole Titgate thing. Um, that now appears to have been resolved, but it's opened... A new front in parking model trains on each other's lawn. Um, no sooner had Hornby issued their apology and climb down, acknowledging that both the Titfield Thunderbolt and Lady in the Lamp set. Now you, you knock yourself out there, Les. You dig in. I've had quite a lot. But they were cancelled, acknowledging that they didn't have the um, the license. Within hours, they announced that they were still doing uh, the Lion, uh, but they were going to do it just as the lion um so we haven't seen anything other than a box artwork mock-up which conspicuously just has a black box where you would normally see the locomotive and stock so i am interested to see how far on hornby actually are and i'll tell you now my suspicion is that hornby are actually quite well advanced and they're just keeping their cards close to their chest and you will basically, the, the locomotive and set will just turn up. That is my guess. A big, big thank you to Ian Parker who has joined the Jenny Kirk membership and of course you two well can done, join the, um, the Jenny Monday Club membership which does give you your name in green, helps support the channel and also gives you access to a whole host of additional unique uh, icons to use in the chat. Um, Tim's Model Railway in different videos says chips, cheese and gravy oh, is not... Oh, yes, yes, that's nice. 
Gordon Hanning says, my boss fell asleep wearing his sunglasses yesterday, he turned up to work with two thirds of his face sunburnt and white bits where the glasses were. I can imagine that was really funny. And the thank you so much to Francis Wadsworth, who has very generously donated two pounds on the Super Chat. Thank you so much for your generosity. It all does help to keep putting out the videos that you guys want to see. Of course, we did the Engage review with the generous donations from the Patreons. Uh, last week, and I am going to be planning uh, more Engage review videos. Um, I believe that Rapido will be sending over some of their forthcoming models in Engage for review, so there will definitely be more. Russell Benton says, I bet Hornby are not very well advanced at all and just pursuing this out of bloody mindedness. Um, don't bet on it. Um, I think that. They may be much more advanced than you think, but I could be wrong. Um, Gregory Callow says, I need to stop buying more train stuff. Do you ever have times where you think you have a problem? Uh, 300 locomotives, 1,000 oh, items of rolling stock. Yeah, there could be a problem going on. A bit of space on the shelves still. We have got room to put more shelves up, so we've not got a problem. <laughs> and... Underneath is the fiddle yard's got about 300 coaches in, plus all There's the drawers up over there. Mm, yeah, that'll be the class 411. Uh, yeah, um, there are times when I, may, I I come out of a model shop having bought two or three locomotives, and I'm like, what am I doing? I've already got loads. I don't buy much, do I? Except when I go to Ali Pali. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, yeah, you were like a kid in a candy oh, store. Yeah. He's rushing yeah. around. He's, you, you, uh, are we allowed to, ad to yeah. admit how much? Almost, I told my wife anyway, so we're still married. Yeah, 44 we... years. So, yeah. how, how was it sleeping in the doghouse? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't get that bad. Yeah, she no. would have. She would have uh, banished you to the um, to your railway room, to the garage, but the she garage. knew you'd have too much fun yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Henry Cummins asks, "Do you have a Batman Class 66?" No, I don't. I don't have any Class 66s. Now, we did review the um, Hatton's Class 66 uh, pre-production model. Um, so there is a review on the channel, but I didn't get to keep it. It was a loner, so it did have to go back. Eric Christiansen says, at Harbour Springs, um, is that MI, Michigan, in the US this week, uh, this coming weekend, the Shea Days live stream meet, um, uh, gauge one of this number one gauge that gauge one of a truly beautiful part of Michigan um, Wow, uh, and uh, are you guys getting the same sort of hot weather that we are as well? Dominic Zed our kickline correspondent says Raymond those Hot Wheels tried to release an action pack based on the Jim Button cartoon back in 1999 But the plans were scrapped Aiden's Railway says I used to love Rocky's Pizza down in Brighton There are some great pizza places up and down the country I have to say Jason Pryor says, Hi Jenny, Zoe and Les, I'm taking my Lego exhibition layout to the Great Electric Train Show. Oh, wonderful. Are you going this year? Uh, we are planning on doing. Well, certainly, um, the Cupboard Monkey and I are definitely, uh, I think, going to be there. Um, it's not massively far from you, the Milton Key. No, well, I'm hoping Mike from... Um, I think that was you, was it? Your, I think your phone. My phone just Yeah. Went, yeah. Uh, I'm hoping to go and help out on his um, store again. Yeah, have you been in contact with him? Have you... No, I've got him on Messenger, so I'll have to mm. send him a Drop message. Drop him a line. Warbler Productions says, I spent too much at last year's Gets, nearly £500. And I will shoulder some of the blame for that. I'll be honest with you. Um, I did take you and introduce you to John Barber at Rails. And, uh, what a nice uh, man. Yeah, yeah, you ended up um, the lanky tank uh, from the second-hand selection. Uh, Timber Services, Pete Waterman's brand new OO gauge layout, Making Tracks 2, will be at Chester Cathedral from 18th next weekend for the whole summer. Ooh. Ben Tullett says, I now have four large storage boxes of trains and rolling stock on top of the existing trains and rolling stock I currently had before I bought more. Oh, my word. Skipsy Train says, try 469 locos. Now there's a problem. Uh, 3B Rail incredibly generously has donated £5 on the Super Chat and says, a small donation to the fund. Thank you ever so much. And certainly your generous donations will help us to keep bringing out the videos that you guys want to see. And this week we're going to be having 
a um, a bargain hunt video on Wednesday. I already filmed it. I've been out and using some of the super chat money and some of the Patreon money. I have been um, uh, hunting down bargains, and of course, at the risk of Mark Wilson going, no, my bargains. Um, Hereford Model Centre does feature, but also um, there's a number of other model shops that I'm highlighting as well. So watch out for that video. Uh, really, really um, good to, you know, if you're looking for new old stock or a great source of second hand, there's probably some really, really good advice in that video on Wednesday. Yeah, the Parker said you can never find the TARDIS. We have put one out, haven't we? Have um, we put two there should out? be two. I don't know where the cupboard monkey's put the other one. She's probably put it somewhere where actually it's not visible, knowing her. I know where one of them is. Mm. Um, I honestly couldn't say where it is. I think she's put one of them where it's not possible to see. Oh, Although, I know, oh, I know no. that one of them has been on camera because I placed it there myself. And you're just not spotting it. So you're going to have to keep looking. Raymond Legg says, I'm slowly buying the trains that are in the late 70s, early 80s, Rocco and Pico catalogues. And James Gilbert says, perhaps Les could call his new build layout not, not Serpia or perhaps Trop, Trop, Cot, Cot, that, what's that, Trop, Cot, Seer? Is that an anagram of... I'm not sure. Um, it's an anag either an anagram or something, or um, what's it backwards? Top, talk port, stockport, stockport, stockport. You can see stockport. Yeah, and um, Preston, Preston, <coughs> got it. Well, part of it is going to be called Winscott Dale, ah, which right. is. You do some talking. I'm going to do some face <laughs> stuffing. Yeah, Winscott Dale is going to be one of the um, main stations, and that's our an anag. That's an anagram of where I was born. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Castle Cliff, um, Woodhar, that's still going to be there. Again, that was a, a mix-up of Harwood. Not Lobby is still going to be a station that's on there. And then I've got a few other station names I'm working on. But yeah, Winscott Dale is probably going to be the key um, station on there. So if you can work out what Winscott Dale is, uh, an anagram of, and it's just one name, and it's local to where I'm now living in the Midlands, um, then I think I know it. You know it. Mm. See what you can come up with. Um, DJK666 is gets and then Warley are very close together. Will we be seeing you at Warley as well? I believe yes, I will also be at Warley. Um, I'm going to be their guest of KR Models, so you'll see me hovering around their stand a lot. Uh, Warbler Production says, I've not been looking for the TARDISES today. We'll have to start looking now. <laughs> I don't know where she's put the other one. There's been one over the wall. This wall. Is that what she said? Have you just I had one? I over there. Um, over, the, over on top of the wall, the TARDIS. The Climo, Climo Chairman. Over on the top of the wall. Uh, which wall? On the screen at the moment. No. I can't see it. I, I honestly don't know where she's put I mean, one. I can see one from here, but we're at an advantage because we've got a slightly <laughs> different view. But it is visible from mm. one of the cameras. Keep talking. <laughs> um, I'm going right, to... Tinty Stream. I'm from Nottinghamshire, by the way. There's a lot of railway history around Nottingham. Um, Absolutely. Long Eden. Uh, Swannington Incline, I've been up and down that a number of times now. Uh, and to the Colville, to the, um, to the mine that was there, the, the railway lines all sort of closed up. But there's also the Great Central and well, the Midland Main Yeah, line. I went to Corn um, to look at the Great Central mm. and they had a robbery not long ago. A um, whole load of stuff stolen oh, yes. from the yard. We did there. Show, show, share a post. Some some scumbags had yeah. broken in and stolen an awful lot of yeah. um, um, phosphor bronze fittings and brass fittings. So that's that's somewhere I would like to probably try and get involved with in the next mm. couple of years. Um, my 
in-laws wanted me to carry on working at the East Flanks or wanted mm. me to start working at the East Flanks because he'd been working there for so 20 what, odd years. What area takes your fancy? What, what, what do you fancy doing on a preserved line? Starting at the bottom and working my way up, seeing what's happened. So being a cleaner? And be a cleaner, <laughs> to get, you know, working, just getting involved with it in mm. some way because my, my knowledge of this is, is very, very limited. Warbler Productions has spotted it, yes. Oh look! over here all along. Simon Trent's Muddle Railway Showcase says swaddling coat. That was Very what, good, Simon. That was going to be my guess. That's correct, yes. So well, I was actually born in Church Gresley, but spent my um, formative years at swaddling coat. Hey, I'll put that over there somewhere that's um, going to be on one of the other cameras. <laughs> Have you got to be stationary? Yeah, it's got to be stationary, but it's also got to be somewhere that A, they can see, and B, it isn't going to get run over by a train. Have you got the carriage? You can do, as long as it can be seen. Um, Warbler Productions says, Les, you need to come down to the Statfold Barn Railway now. You're close. Yes, have yes. You, have I've, you ever I've, been there? No, I haven't. I've been invited by... Um, can't see where... Is it Warbler Productions that invited you? No. Dale. Um, Dale, yeah. Dale. Yeah, that's Warbler oh, Productions. Oh, is that Dale? Right, yes. I will do in time. Uh, James Hardy says, Jenny, what do you think of Dr. Beeching? I think <laughs> Dr. Beeching was given a task that was a thankless task by the then government of the day and he completed the task based on the brief he was given and he was used as a convenient scapegoat but actually it's interesting that a lot of his recommendations weren't taken up and everybody focuses on on the closures but actually he also outlined investment that needed to take place and a lot of that never actually happened. So they they, they used him as a convenient scapegoat. Um, so a lot of people vilify the man, but actually I think that is deeply unfair. Ian Coulson says quite a lot of blue liveries on the tracks tonight. Absolutely, we've got um, the rail blue, but also we've got Caledonian blue. And we've got the BR Experimental Blue as well. Um, Ginty Steam says, Statfold Barn is an awesome place. Absolutely. Uh, and certainly we've visited twice and uh, really enjoyed our time there. Uh, Henry Cummins says, I might head out to check on my Hornby Class 47, 47808. I must admit, one of the things uh, we were talking about uh, different manufacturers before, um, actually, one of the things that um, I find quite interesting with Hornby, and maybe they're unsung heroes, heroes uh, of the range, the Railroad Plus 31s, 47s and 37s, I think are going to be well worth an investigation. Because uh, I think they might actually prove to be quite good value. And Ham Shackleton, absolutely. Ernest Marple is the real villain. Absolutely. Uh, Ian Parker says strawberries and ice cream. Anyone with chocolate sauce? Oh, I've had a garden full of strawberries. Oh, right. All homegrown. Are they know. easy enough to grow? Dead easy. You try stopping growing them. And we've always had success do, with strawberries. Do, do you have to replant them every year or do they just keep coming back? We haven't. Uh, anyway, talk quite a lot. <laughs> my wife's a gardener, so um, we've just let the strawberries grow. Um, we've taken cuttings, um, given some to my daughter as mm -hmm. well. Uh, eventually, some of the old ones you have to get rid of because they become a little bit sort of woody, I suppose. But no, um, we started off with about 20 strawberry plants, and we must have nearly 150. So we've had strawberries coming out of our ears. Mm. By the way, Doctor Who's TARDIS is um, relocated, so keep your eyes out for him, or her. Whatever Doctor Who is now, I don't know. I've not watched it for years. <laughs> Yeah, we stopped talking Sorry. just as soon as I got... I mean, Sorry. God for... But yeah, actually, we probably lost more railways post-beaching than beaching actually closed. There was a huge wind-down of, down of the railways across the 1970s and 1980s. So I think that he's the one that everybody focuses on, but actually, um, Ernest Sharples was, um, was one of the biggest crooks who decimated Britain's railways 
purely to line his back pocket through his construction company. Uh, Warbler Productions, yeah, I, I particularly like the narrow gauge, the Welsh Highland Railways and things like that. Mm. So um, maybe that would be something. Are you having a narrow gauge on your... I am indeed, yes. Uh, it'll still be DC. I know you tried to persuade <laughs> me to go DCC and eventually I may do. But because DCC is still the black art to me, I've got to learn a lot. At least I can get a little narrow gauge up and running and be faffing about with that while I'm still building landscapes and working out everything else. Mm. So I've got quite a reasonable little collection of um, 009 scale and I want you know I was inspired as well by the one that um, you did a uh, mini tapas so I intend to make yeah. something that's, that's small and get it up and running as quickly as possible. Mm. Mm. Uh, I'm just trying to read him <laughs> just so I focus on one like he jumps up and something else. Uh, the Doctor is currently female, but changing back to the 10th version in October, right? Um, I must add, one of the, the um, places that I've been working to and from is actually Doctor Who. All right. So I've seen a bit and I can't let on. Oh no, obviously. No, no I, I, it's just a programme, a bit like Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who. I lost interest in those years ago. I don't know why. Um, maybe sometimes if you step away from something for too long, you can't get back into it. Uh, I just preferred it when it was all the shaky screens and, uh, <laughs> you know, um, very liquid foam, you know, the, the disease bubble wrap. Thing, bubble wrap. Yeah. Spray paint and <laughs> bubble wrap. Um, mm. I'm also hoping to try and get one of these um, motorised uh, vehicle setups, but nothing's um, too... Oh, the Fowler type thing. Not, not the Fowler, there's another one. Um, mm. I, know, I, know, I know what you mean. I've seen um, one guy's work... Magna Rail. Magna Rail, that's it, mm. with the bicycles. Quite fancy doing it with the boats, if that's possible. I think it is. Well possible. Um, you'd need something like um, thin acrylic. You paint the underside so it looks like murky water, like a yeah. canal. And then your narrow boat... Um, your narrow boats, you have um, the magnets in them, and they're kind of a waterline model. Yeah. And you probably put something like felt so that they slide easily, and they'll sit on the the um, the, the acrylic and slide along as the magna rail pulls them. I could try that. Certainly, uh, it won't be anything sort of gigantic because I mean it's about 150 pounds just for a starter kit, which. You don't They're get a not lot cheap, for it, but and they do tend to be um, European or well. There is a, a UK stockist now of Magna Rail, but I forget who it is. But do they do UK yeah. outline yeah. stuff? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, with a bicycle, a bicycle is a bicycle. Uh, a lot of people have actually um, spotted the TARDIS. Have they? Oh, yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> Uh, right. Sarah Davis says the TARDIS is on the move. Ian O'Brien says TARDIS on upper level. James Hardy says, I can see the TARDIS. Right, well it's gone, it's gone up into mm. space somewhere. It's going to go Ham Shackleton else. also spotted saying the TARDIS going around on the high level on the flat truck. Yeah, well Absolutely. Done. Now, somebody did ask about the coach that is fourth in the rake with the Deltic, and that is Post the office. Mark I TPO from when they first appeared. So that's actually the Model Zone exclusive. So you'll see it coming now. That's one, two, three. There's your TPO, and that is actually the same coach that you bought at uh, Ali pa uh, yeah. Ali Pali, um, but you got it in the Royal Mail got fancy Royal, livery, yeah. yeah. And mm. so yes, James Hardy, it, it is a post coach. Right. Uh, this is back on somewhere else. Oh, you well, has he moved? He's moved. He's moved. <laughs> right. So. Um, David Scott says, back to crossroads with the wobbly set. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, doors would sort of sway. Miss Diane. Miss would... <laughs> Diane. <laughs> Diane. Yeah. Benny going upstairs, never coming back. Um, so, um, any other news? Well, the Class 89 has been confirmed from Akira Stealthy. We mentioned that last week. Somebody did ask about the Daypol Manor. Now, I was told by the end of July, so there is still time, so um, no need to rush. Um, but you, you just dig in there, Les. It's all there to be eaten. So you dig in, because whatever you don't eat goes in the bin. 
Remember, the starving oh, children in life. Africa who will be very displeased if you don't eat everything. Ow. Oh, I'm gonna have to turn this off, I think. It's... Oh, no, no, it's not too bad. Have we still got water in? Yes, we have. So, um, David, it's my mother Rose, is TARDIS by signal on top level. Um, this one. I don't see it. I, I mean, honestly, um, I have no idea where Zoe hid it. I mean, honestly, I, I'm, I'm hoping that somebody might point it out. Um, Ginty Steam asks, what year was the last use of TPO line side apparatus? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I suspect sometime in the early 1970s. Um, right. Uh, oh, yes. And, uh, of course, going back to Crossroads, DJK666 says, let's not forget the phones that kept ringing after being picked <laughs> up. It was great, and they never did. They, they basically it was the the first um, the first take. They just used it. Yeah. So um, use any cars on Magna Rail. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, but any, I, would you not have to modify them in some way? Talk to us about Magna Rail. Oh, I don't know a great deal about it yet. <laughs> um, but I'm more interested in not so much the cars, but the bicycles or the boats or something slightly quirky, a little bit different. Um, I always feel that the cars when they're moving, they don't move. They have a little bit of a jerky. Yeah, version. that's right, yeah. Uh, I mean, ideally you want what they've got in Germany. That kind of setup, but uh, that is fantastic. That's on my bucket list for hopefully next year. I know um, Ian's been to it a couple of times, well, two or three times, um, and hmm. he says you need probably two or three days to go around it because it's constantly expanding. Hmm. Hardy's on the brake van. Well spotted, James Hardy, correct? We'll have to find somewhere else. <laughs> So, a little hint for you, don't put it on the train that's going round. Well, they've got to have a, a, you know, a shooting chance at it, haven't they? Because <laughs> it's always hidden one that they can't see. I don't know. Good um, monkey, can you hear us? Where is she hidden at? We were looking now, I bet she's got it downstairs or something, something naff like that. Or she's put it somewhere that never actually features on camera. No, any, any I'm struggling. The, any of the camera views <laughs> been changed recently, so... Mm. I honestly cannot see where she's put it. There you are, find some there. Over right. there. When I'm not on camera. Hmm. Big thank you to Alfonso La Pulsa, who is our newest Jenny Kirk membership member. And thank you so much, of course, it's a really great way of supporting the channel and you also get early access to the Friday video and you get that access advert free and also you get your name in green and the use of several exclusive emojis as well. <laughs> I can never see what I'm... No, no, it's I'm, on a different thing. I, they might need to so, change the Welcome camera aboard, then. Alfonso La Pulsa says, Chair, fly my chairman one, absolutely. Jerry BVR, I think you might be right there, saying TARDIS and so is I wonder what that hard piece was, I'll just say. Mm. Mm. <laughs> a big hello to March West Junction TMD. And uh, I've probably got pizza all around my mouth now. Values 56XX, absolutely, and I am bugging Zoe to add some extra um, uh, icons. Hi Kent, greetings to you. Uh, Do the cameras change automatically? No, no, I'm pressing buttons over here. Because you won't see where the TARDIS is. And... Oh, it's alright, um, I'll find it, there you are. <laughs> Keep talking. Talk about trains. <laughs> choo choo! <laughs> um, right, on the car system. James Hardy, have you ever been to a in Germany? No, I've seen it loads of times on YouTube, that's all. Um, I am. I've never been either. We were hoping to have gone in 2019 with my brother in law, but um, he had a, a knee issue and uh, needed an operation on it, so as we're all going together, mm. 
by having to wait. That's on the mend for him now, but then COVID comes along. But hopefully next year I would like to, to go. Uh, a lot of people are spotting the TARDIS already. All right. I'm um, not very good at this hiding the TARDIS Nick part. Nick Kirolimu right. says, Jen, don't know this, but what size is your railway? Um, I'm not sure to be. Well, what size would you estimate this to be? Uh, 15, 16 foot by 12? Something like that. Mm -hmm. And the, the baseboards are anywhere up to... That's about 5 four, feet, 4, four, 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 four foot, definitely. That's a little bit narrower. Mm. Yeah, that's probably about three, three foot six, four foot on either side. Yeah, and then there's similar. a lot of space. And yeah. then, I mean, I've got the lower level, which is not yeah. scenic, but it's um, a, a, a huge fiddle yard. Loads of people have found the TARDIS, so um, Isn't it again. Yeah, but that, that doesn't appear on camera. Does it? Oh, but I have. <laughs> so they just see your shadow moving about. Right. Alfonso Le Pulse says, would a TARDIS pizza be bigger than it looks? Um, it'd be bigger on the inside than the outside, I guess. You could have a TARDIS pizza box. Uh, David Scott says, according to Wikipedia, the last pickup from apparatus by mail train was the 4th of October 1971, north of Penrith. So I was right in saying the 70s. Yeah, yeah. And David Shaw says, the Deltic seems to be running very it's well. Absolutely. Running, yeah. And Not when burning. you look at the length of the train that that is pulling effortlessly, no sign of um, any wheel stuff or anything like that. In terms of That's other fun. news, I'm trying to think what other news there is. In all honesty, um, I, I've been immersed in uh, doing a lot of filming work last week, so I'm not sure that I've fully kept up. We've got the 20% eBay sale with Rails of Sheffield. Um, there's also TMC have been sharing some of the livery samples for the all new, I think it's the G5, which is an 044 um, tank locomotive, ex LNER tank locomotive. Uh, 3B Rails is non sound dealt it, finally went for £645. That's crazy. Absolutely, given somebody said that the sound one went for about uh, 510 so somebody paid more for less. And how desperate do people have to be for a model? I mean, do you think they're kicking themselves that they didn't actually just blooming well order one when they had the chance? I mean, that is... How desperate do you have to be for a locomotive to pay that kind of money? Um, DK, I mean, K66, he's got to go because he's driving buses tomorrow. No I'll worries. We'll let you go. You take care, yeah. and it's been great I'll having you your company. To to work Absolutely. On time. Um... Ooh, Alfonso Le Pulsa says a pizza that fits through the letterbox but then expands would have been useful during lockdown. <laughs> uh, and yeah, James Hardy, I've seen that the planes even take off in, in, in Wunderland. Yeah. Uh, Ian Parker says, got another 15 guards fans today. I do love a good guards fan. And I must admit, my latest purchase, uh, one of my latest purchases is a guards fan. I got Bertie the Brake fan. From Hornby, I do like that. It's just the interesting little liveries, unusual liveries. Yes. I mean, it was, it was a real brake fan. It used to sit at Chester. Um, I don't even know whether it got preserved or not, but certainly it was quite a late-lasting uh, brake fan. But um, I couldn't help myself and uh, finally picked one of these up. Uh, but TMC has also been having a few um, little flash sales. Rails of Sheffield as well, flash sales have included the APT for £295. Um, a lot of people talk about the GT3 liveries. And yes, we had the GT3 announcement. Um, some people knew last week anyway, uh, because Hornby Magazine went and uh, um, released the information early. But um, yeah, GT3 from KR Models, you're looking at... The LMS Black, BR Green, and, um, and we're also having a rerun of the original liveried version. And they've proven very popular. Now, they're strictly limited edition. Well, certainly the, the LMS Black, sorry, the BR Black and the BR Green, those three are limited edition. I think it's 250 of each. But the brown one i think there are some more of that that's not a strictly limited edition the limited edition ones do come with a separate numbered certificate 
Um, but really, if it's a must-have item, you must order it because they will go quick. Ben Tullet says, hydrated pizza. Remember that concept from Back to the Future 2? Yeah, I do remember that. Simon Trains Mother Railway showcases do like the Brunswick Green GT3. It does look good in some of these liveries. And what it's actually shown, <coughs> excuse me, is that there is a lot of demand for these things. The loud people go, oh, no, it never ran like that. Oh, oh you can't do that. They're actually just a very loud minority, and behind them there's a silent majority who go, I quite like that, I think I'll, I'll, I'll have one. one. I got the GT3. You got the brown one, which the is brown. how it actually yeah. did run. Yeah. I've got a rail blue one up here. I've only, funny enough, I've only got the rail blue one. I don't have the brown one. The brown one was a loner and had to go back, and I ended up getting the blue one. I still haven't run that. It's still in the box from buying it to... <laughs> Did we we test run, run it here? Did we test no, run? Not, oh no, of course because I dropped I dropped you straight yeah. off from the yeah. one. So. Um, <clears throat> Warbler Productions says, "Wish I could afford an LMS livery one. Need to get a job, I think." <laughs> Ooh, I mean, it's it's one of those things that it's there's too many nice things, not enough yeah. money. Yes. Um, but yeah, definitely they are. Um, Hi, Tim Davis. Oh, hello, Tim Davis. Great to see you, and Robert Becking as well. Uh, Francis Wadsworth says, do like the EWS load haul uh, liveries. Yeah, a load haul is, it's, it's a bit of a marmite one, and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to grow on it, I have to say. Raymond Legs, dry water, that sounds like an initiation to uh, uh, naval cadets. <laughs> yeah, go for a long stand, bucket of steam, can of dry water, tartan paint, that's the other one. Or, oh, the one that, um, Go and ask the uh, the chief petty officer for a couple of feet of fallopian tubing. <laughs> yes. Uh, the big fella says, I love the blue one. Absolutely, yeah. I'll I, I try, I try and remember to get that out for next week. Uh, David Scott asks, what's the latest on the new Monday Club Wagon, please? Um, coming along nicely, um, it will be released with the main range PAL bricks. Um, I think it's about uh, end of August, beginning of September is what we're looking at. Um, but they are strictly limited edition, uh, and uh, when they're gone, they're gone for good, just like the previous Secure Scale model. Um, and they sold really, really well, so if they're an indication, these are going to go really quickly. Uh, Southern Video Photographer says, I'm just waiting for Wally to spend my money. I've just got a load of Southern and LMS stuff. Yes, I'm weird. Me thinking building Somerset and Dorset joint railway. Although the Somerset and Dorset, that was, um, was that LMS and Southern? Oh, yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was LMS and Southern. Um, mm. Ian Parker says, I gave away free of charge nice. nine spiders <laughs> in my boxes of building at Alley Park. Oh, yeah, free spider with every one. Raymond Legg says, I'd love to get a DB Cargo Class 66, probably Hornby. Um, and from what I've heard, the Hornby one is not too bad. It, it's derived from what was one of the very last models that Lima actually tooled up for. Nigel Cole says, looking forward to the Monday Club Wagon I ordered. Oh, thank you so much. And Flymo Channel 1, thank you for sharing the link. So the link yes, is there in the chat. Order with confidence. Fulfillment is being handled by Rails of Sheffield. <laughs> Alfonso La Pulsa says, yeah, hey, new lad, can you ask the foreman for a left-handed screwdriver? <laughs> There's a lot of yeah. these initiation yeah. things. The thing is, to actually come out one step ahead of them, um, I remember going down to, I spent uh, a couple of weeks at Britannia Royal Navy, Naval College, and I did get, um, somebody thought they could get one over on me. Uh, one of the officers told me to go and, um, go and get a bucket of uh, tartan paint from the st stores. And I knew that he was yanking my chain. So what I did was I went to the stores and I got, uh, I asked him, didn't ask for tartan paint. I said, have you got um, a can of black and a, pa a can of red paint, please? And so I got the two different cans and yeah. I came back and I said, they were out of tartan paint, but they said you can mix these together. <laughs> Yeah, Raymond Legs. Yeah, I, I uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's what I was always taught as well when I when I did engineering, um, for remembering which way to turn nuts and bolts. Although a left-handed thread always throws you. There are occasional applications where a thread that goes the opposite way is useful. Uh, 
Southern video photographer says, I wonder some, is, someone, is someone going to do an S160 or a Q class? I, I think eventually most models will get done if you wait long enough. But um, Simon Train's Model Railway Showcase says, someone asked me to go to the George desk at Asda once for some fallopian tube. Stupid me went and asked with the customers laughing. <laughs> hey. Oh, Valley's 56XX. Sinister Dexter. That is... Um, um, the um, gun loving criminals from um, uh, was it Strontium Dog there in or no 2000 AD? I love those. You you gotta love a guy who brings a nuke to a knife fight. <laughs> right, um, uh, Ian Park. Oh yeah, the glass hammer. This probably is applications where you would actually use a glass hammer. I don't know what. Certainly you can get um, leather, leather covered hammers for doing certain things like mm. panel beating so it doesn't leave dings yeah, on the metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can also uh, a brass hammer uh, because the metal is softer so if you're tapping in something metal that you don't want to be distorted the hammer distorts not what not you're tapping. So there are uses for alternative hammers. Uh, Raymond Legg says Roco released the S160 in 2017 and is releasing it again this year. Are they updating it? Because what I must admit is it looks lovely, but it runs like a dog. And the reason for this is it's tender drive and, and it only drives the outer two axles on the tender. And it's got rubber traction tyres, but quite frankly... It's a very disappointing drive system for what is a really, really beautiful locomotive. It's also HO. Um, so. And expensive. Raymond Legs, absolutely. I think it was about about three, four hundred pounds and not a cheap locomotive. Uh Flying with Chairman One says a nylon leather head hammer, a dead blow hammer too. Uh, Sue at Putnam Junction is uh, is uh, leaving us. Okay, bye, Sue. So, uh, Thank you for joining us. Or is it Francis? <coughs> it might be Francis who's heading off. I, I, oh, the big fella says I got two of your wagons from Rails. Very good. Oh, I am glad. I am glad you're happy. Um, it was a great scheme, actually. Really, really great scheme. Brass and bronze hammers hum are used in spark-proof areas. Yeah, because they won't spark when you hit them. Yeah, there's a lot of different uses for unusual hammers. Uh, Jerry BBR says a glass hammer is pointed for smashing car windows. Um, yeah, but it, it's not made of glass. So actually, if somebody says go and get a glass hammer, what you actually come back with is the thing for smashing glass. It's a glass hammer. Yeah. It's a breaking glass. That's what it's called. Ah. Egg Rider asks, anyone else notice that the Railway Children model is the 4F, but both the S160 and Bahamas have appeared in promotional material for the film? Not noticed, but um, not been looking too hard, it must be said. Um, Ian Parker says, a track pin hammer. Where's my track pin? Well, that's um, um, a oh, coffee hammer. No, it's like a tiny little hammer. It's a um, panelling hammer or something, I think they're called. A really small hammer. And you get a ball peen hammer. What are they actually for? What's the ball peen bit for? I've never heard of one, but. Uh, um, <coughs> and yes, Ham Shackleton, they really are left handed scissors. Yes, yeah. Um, We've got a pair in our house. Well, do you or your wife left handed? No, my mum in law was, but we still got them. Right. Um, but but I, I, can, I can use left handed or right handed, so. Yeah, useful. so you can put the ambidextrous? Not with everything. I'm plastered right handed, so. But I use my left hand for mm. screwdrivers, cricket, tennis, to play that either I, hand. I'm very much the same. I favour my right for certain things, but I can use I my... Can, I can paint both ordinary household painting. I can also do artwork with my left hand as well yeah. as my right hand. But I do tend to obviously favour Can you one. write with your left? No. See, I, only, I, like, I can, only like a spider. I can write with my left, but it looks like a three-year-old. <laughs> because I just tend not to use it. Ah, Timber Surf says ball peen is to hammer round things like rivets. Right, and it's round for shaping metal, says Jerry BBR. Um, <laughs> Alfonso Le Pulse raises a, a deep philosophical question. If a glass hammer <laughs> is for hitting glass, what are copper hammers for? <laughs> right, Ham Shackleton says ball peen hammers are used for forming metal around a dome shape. 
Ben Tullet says, here's a good one for you, Jenny. Tire tape to tape up large splits in tires. Isn't that just um, gaffer tape? <laughs> uh, Warbler Production says, I'm a lefty, but I've gotten so used to using my right hand for using most tools, I've become ambidextrous. Quite fun playing tennis where I change hands mid-rally. Yeah, that does throw people. Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan can play snooker, both left and right-handed, and he can really throw people doing that. Yeah, Ian Coulson, uh, magnetic tools are very useful. Um, I have a set of um, uh, jeweler's screwdrivers which are fully magnetised because they're really useful. Because holding, holding those tiny little yeah, screws. Yeah, the tiny little screws you put on the end of the screwdriver and it just stays there. You can waft it around yeah. and it stays in position so you can lower it, it into drop the. Off into that carpet that you can yeah. never find where it's gone. But it means you can lower it into the tiny little hole, normally yeah. like deep down in the locomotive, and screw it in. Really, really useful. Are we doing videos tonight, uh, Pete John? Um, due to the heat and the fact that the cupboard monkey's downstairs, I'm unfortunately, um, we're, we're just going to. I, I don't know. If the cupboard monkey appears, then yes. If not, then uh, unfortunately not. Will she hear if I shout her? No, I did. She'll turn up eventually. She'll like, what keeps you keep banging I, on? I keep catching her. Oh, right. I need to, uh, I think. Oh, I see. There's a. Right. I think I'm undone. Have I broken the chair? That's right. You won't invite me back. It's loose. Something was loose. No, oh, I see. Lucy left it tidy. <laughs> Um, yeah, Nigel Cole says, I'm ambidextrous, which comes in handy. Me too. Um, there's a lot of people that are ambidextrous. Um, Ian Parker says, wife lost house keys, so I used a sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about a sledgehammer is you don't go sledging on it. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Beverage of choice, by the way, is Diet Cola. Oh, can I die at Coca-Cola? I thought he'd, he'd change off Les. Yes, uh, we've let him out from the modelling yeah. dungeon for good behaviour. He spent two years down there whittling jab light with his little yeah. hot wire. But you're actually up, um, in all, all honesty. For We're filming the um, second part. Why are you not... What's wrong with these? Come on, <laughs> eat them. Eat, Don't force feed me. You, you need feeding up. Ben Tullett says Gandalf has been very quiet tonight. Well, he's uh, he got his hat caught in the letterbox, so he's still down there trying to trying to free himself. <laughs> I've seen his stuff. Ah. Just with both hands. But no, we're filming uh, Hornby and Model World this week. We are, yeah. We've already done um, filming a couple of weeks ago, so we're now completing the filming. And we get to go out on location as we well. We do, location, location. Yeah, we're doing yeah. a location filming this time round, um, as well as some... Um, Plenty of suntan lotion on and big brim Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I can't... T we can't tell them anything about what we're... the project we're working on. But suffice to say, you will see it in Hornby and Model World Series 2. Um, so um, I'm very, very honoured to be, um, I think I'm the only person from the modellers who have been invited back to Series 2, yeah, so I, I do feel quite honoured for that. People seem to like the upside down layer. What did you make of that? It was intriguing. I mean, i only seen the video and then obviously when mm. I came here and we dismantled it. Um, yes, it was a, a novel kind of concept, an Escher type, because I remember yeah. you were starting planning that as I was booking sticks and moving. So yeah, I yeah, because um, I did it with Paul Tyre, yeah. um, who, you know, I, um, the first time I actually met him was when we uh, we were invited to exhibit it at the Glasgow show, and when he turned up, he's got long hair now, oh, and I didn't recognise him, this guy just sidled up and went, hello Jenny, and I'm like, hello, and then went back to work, and then it twigged later and he went, you don't recognise me, do you? I don't think I would have And it was like, one. it was Paul, the guy I'd done the layout with. And it's like, oh, man. Well, last time I saw Paul, we were up in Scotland doing uh, the Dick Strawbridge. Well, that was the first time I'd seen him in person since filming that five years ago. So it had been a long time. Jinty Steam says, I think Jenny likes the fame. And <laughs> it, it's, it's nice to be... 
I, 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 yeah, it's like uh, the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. Um, yeah, I, th I think, you know, I would be lying if I said, no, I don't, I don't like the fact. But um, it is kind of nice because I was the one at school who was instantly forgettable, that was um, mercilessly bullied and ignored. So actually, to now not be ignored anymore yeah, is quite, it's quite it's cathartic. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, when, when I, so did I suggest, was I talking with you about the idea before yeah, the film? Yeah, because I was um, having a look to see what Escher type, um, you mm. know, perpetual motion and uh, the never ending staircase and waterfall. Yeah, yeah. But there was just an initial thought that you put that way um, yeah. about doing something that was topsy turvy. Yeah, because I, I then um, I went to the it was the TV company asked me to come up with something that would be memorable, different, definitely. And when I was talking with them, I have to say um, what they focused on was the idea of running the train upside down, and that for me was rather more than the Escher side of things. Yeah, they just wanted. To, oh, oh. Oh no, that is where you put. Oh, I thought that's. What, I thought we finally found no, where Zoe had put it. Can't, You're can't absolutely see. right, Peter Jackson, Cheadle Heath. It is in the yellow tree. I thought for a moment there we discovered where, where um, the cupboard monkey had hidden um, the other one. Wilbur Productions got it as well. And don't forget to tickle that like button, share the stream, and subscribe if you haven't already done so too. The Growler, Blackwood, Engage Layers. A good evening, good evening, Jenny, and the famous Les. Infamous. Uh, yeah, yeah, but no, it's like everybody knows about you. <laughs> Been on Crime Watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've no. seen Les, ring this number. <laughs> but no, it's oh, seven four four two four. <laughs> but I always love working on projects with well, you. We get on, get on well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Same time and time again. We have similar ideas. Similar because this will be the third TV series that we've worked together on. Yeah. We actually met on the first. Yes, yes. I can't believe we never knew each other. That we never knew each other, and yet no. we lived so close, and we get on really well. Yes. And it's I, 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 I did miss you, Les, when well, you moved I've away. Well, I've missed, i missed coming here mm. um, to do things as well. But uh, yeah, yeah, I have to go and do other things. Um, but I'm still in contact. I mean, mm. it's, it's two-hour journey. It's not the end yeah, of the world. Yeah, it's, it's not like you've <laughs> moved to uh, Antarctica. So there'll be plenty of chance to do other things. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, when when you do start building your layout, then I'm sure you'll have me around to help you out. I'll have you underneath my board. Yeah, all the whittling, <laughs> whittling jab light. You're going, now come on, Jenny, you're not coming out until all that jab light's whittled. Uh, it's not going to whittle itself. <laughs> we joke about that, but actually it was you who showed me how to do it. When we built the War of the Worlds layout, yeah. um, I'd never actually contemplated using that technique before, and it was you who showed me exactly it's, how to do it. It's a good technique. Obviously, there's variations mm. that you can do. Uh, it's not necessarily the cheapest, but you get structure and substance more or less straight away with it. Mm. So a big hello to Wardle Road. Hi, uh, Wardle Road. Great to see you. Um, just scanning through the comments. Jinty Steam says, I'm the only one who doesn't know who he is. It's Les. It's Les. Me. <laughs> um, as seen on um, you were the machine on oh, uh, Biggest yeah, Little Railway. Biggest Little Railway, yeah. And, uh, and um, you were on the the War of the uh, uh, the, the the Rail Riders team with me. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We built War of the Worlds. That's still on display at Bolton. Are you, have you actually been down and seen it? Oh yeah, we went down when last time. Came, yeah, two weeks, three weeks ago. I'm just I was thinking like I've seen it recently. I wonder yeah. if Les has. Yeah, you we, we you took took it down there. Yeah. So it's nice to see that they have mm. to do um, renovations to it because the boards have started yeah, but yeah, to, to buckle. But I'll be honest, there's one thing I will give Brian. He, he, he did come moan to high heaven about the quality of the baseboards. And yeah, the, the, the quality of the baseboards that were used um, for uh, the uh, Great Model Railway Challenge was diabolical. So I don't know how many people still have any of those layouts that were built for Great Model Railway Challenge, but I'm guessing they're all having difficulties. I mean, we had to strengthen and repair ours yeah. even before we started yeah. building, because they arrived um, not just damaged, but badly made and yeah. damaged. So, uh, yeah, uh, Wardle Road says, hi all who said hello, just got in from work. Work? What's that? Yeah, well, it's this work <laughs> thing of which you speak. 
Um, Where can I see the biggest little railway? Um, well, there are. It was on Channel Four, but it's been syndicated around the world. I know it's been shown um, definitely in Australia. I think there are clips on YouTube from it. But yeah, the yeah. whole series. I've still got the, um, I the DVD that was made for us by, oh gosh, uh, yeah. by Maps. Is it not on, um, what's the uh, 4 on demand, 4OD? I wonder if it's on that. Oh, the water rest of the underground was like 50 degrees. To, I bet it is. Why is, the, why is the underground, which is underground and should be quite cool, why is it so hot? Can anybody explain to me, why is the London underground so hot? Ed's Egg says, does Brian have a YouTube channel? Don't know, don't care. Oh, we don't. Robin Stewart says, trip. I'm hoping to build a southern layout for next year. Um, I like southern. I, I don't know why I like southern, uh, but um, I, I've got a soft spot for southern. Well, what do you tend to go for? Oh, because I don't have the constraints of being... It's just, just ooh, shiny. Yeah, shiny, shiny, you know, nice. Mm. So I've got all four um, and other um, locos as well and I'll mix and match I don't necessarily have the right coaches and the right order of coaches with the right locomotive but mm. hey ho it's a model it's a game it's a escapism so yeah it's great if you want to go down that line where everything has got to be absolutely accurate but I'm I'm more about the landscape as I often say trying to build a world where trains sort of tootle around it uh, in a make-believe world not lobia mm. it's like Sudar it's Fictitious. And the new layout that I'm doing, that will be fictitious as well. Oh, that's piece. No, I'll have a piece of the garlic bread. Right. So, um, I just I just enjoy the fun and getting immersed in the creativity of, of doing something that is totally unique uh, and brings pleasure not just to me, but for other people who might not be as railway-minded to come and have a look and say, wow, I like that, what's to be done there? Hmm. So... Uh, at least let me keep talking until I finish my golf ball. <laughs> you golf ball. Mm. Um, right. Uh, move so quick. 100 years of continuous running trains has held the entirety of London's ground by several degrees. Oh. I mean, I suppose if it's always hot underground, yeah. that heat will eventually move into yeah. the surrounding terrain. But yeah, I think. Dynamic brakes, Raymond Lex says. Um, ben Tullet says the trains, brakes, and electric motors create the excess heat on the underground. And somebody also did say um, that uh, when they brake, they use resistance braking. I'm surprised that they can't um, have regenerative braking that puts the energy back into the track for other trains to use. Um, or even, I would have thought that flywheel booster units might be a uh, a much more efficient way of doing things. Gordon Hanning, Les, you will upset the rivet counters. I don't mean to, this place for both rivet counters and non rivet counters. It's, uh, it's a huge hobby. Yeah. And we can all sort of do what we want to it to enjoy it without hopefully upsetting everybody else. Hmm. James Pretz, good evening. I see a guest. It's Les. It's Les. Mm. <laughs> We've let him out from the modelling yeah. dungeon for good behaviour. So I wonder why there isn't a heat extracting system in the underground. You would have thought that actually some kind of community yeah. heating project in Do the winter. Do they have anything like that in other countries underground, like I don't know, know. in Europe or in America? I don't know. Well, but a community heating project might actually be quite efficient. Hmm. Rivet Counter United. <laughs> The thing, though, is that um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, yeah, rivet counters. Why do they get so bothered about what other people have on their layouts? That, that's what I don't get. I mean, I, I'm, I couldn't care less what other people have on their layout. You know, whatever floats their boat. And if they want everything to be super perfect and true to life, then kudos to them if they can pull that off. But... I've never understood the kind of people who get really het up about what other people have on their layout. At the end of the day, no matter mm. how you dress it up, it's just grown-ups playing with toy trains. Yes. And that will upset quite a lot of people me saying that, but it is. But it's escapism. It's a way of, mm. you know, getting away from the mundane or the humdrum of life and all the pressures 
and you can just get immersed in something creative, have a bit of fun, mm. and if it looks realistic and feels right to you, then it is. It doesn't really matter if somebody else wants it to be more realistic, that's up to them. If they want to make sure that the, the rivets are all in the right order, that the trains are pulling the right coaches, yeah. fine. But, you know, this this is realistic in one way, mm. but it's not accurate. You've got lots of lovely locomotives on here, and you've got realistic scenes. And they're all for like different time yeah, periods, yeah. you know, we've got the Ca uh, Caledonian Railways, Era 2 locomotive, and then we've got Class 55 Delta, we've got 1920s so Mack trains. Trains going round. Absolutely. And the thing is, though, you see, I've never ever modelled a real location. I've been inspired by mm. real locations. But the closest I ever got was Bolton Trinity Road when I had that layout in the shed. And it was heavily inspired by Bolton Trinity Street, but no way was it an accurate thing, and nor did I try and pretend it. And I, I, I could never model a real location. Well, when you're modeling, modeling fictitious places, the world's your oyster. You can really let your imagination go. Mm. You're not constrained by any of the factors that say it's got to have this, it's got to be you know, these buildings or this particular track layout and you can only run these coaches and this type of trains in that scenario. Mm. After a while, and unless you can keep developing it and developing it, it just mm. becomes boring. In my opinion, I'm not saying it's right, it's just how I feel about it. That's uh, <laughs> an interesting point. Ben Tullet says, Remember, rivet counters also moan about preserved railways running the incorrect carriages behind certain locos. Oh, and the people got up in arms when, um, is it Tor Valley got repainted purple? Well, I painted a purple train. <laughs> and, well, Tor Valley, I think that purple is fantastic. Mm. It's so nice to just see splash of bright colour. Mm. I don't know whether purple is a particular favourite of the Queen, maybe it is, but what I did, I wasn't prepared to pay, I don't know how many hundreds, 300 pounds for the model version, so I bought a cheap Airfix kit of mm. Evening Star, mm. and the Evening Star has been painted up purple, I've not finished doing it all yet, and it was going to be a static display model in a, in a siding at a a station or something like that with some little miniature people taking photographs of it mm. because I felt from not Lobia's point of view that it was a the right kind of locomotive to use because it was the last VR engine to be built mm. and I thought what a fitting tribute to take that as a model and paint it up bright purple absolutely so it's realistic even though it's fictional mm. and I think it just stands as well as the, the one that they they took Oh wow, Simon Trains Model Railway Showcase has just seen an Acura Scale Deltic bidding on eBay for currently £645 with 50 bids. Um, I mean it's just unreal isn't it? And people complain about all oh, their hobbies getting expensive and yet somebody out there is prepared to splash out a whole lot of money. Ian Parker, Leslie, did you find low load of lorry? Oh no, I didn't find one that got a long enough trailer for the um, the locomotive to fit on. I have seen one that was being sold as a group of four items from, I don't know if it's Hattons or Rails, mm. but it would only have held the, the, um, the coal tender and I mm. wanted one that would hold the locomotive first and then maybe a second one for the thing. So I'm reverting back to the idea of it being in a siding, in a side of a, an engine shed in a heritage siding, so, um, but I'll keep looking anyway, you never know. Mm. And um, Peter Jackson Cheadle Heath says, uh, Mark Wilson, your layouts are real, you just think they are most, absolutely, anybody who's seen Mark Wilson's layout, he really does model real locations amazingly. Um, I mean, when I passed through, um, I passed through uh, Birmingham New Street, and the bit that Mark Wilson made a model of, as I passed through it, it's like, my God, I'm in a Mark Wilson model. <laughs> yeah, he is I've not, I've incredible. Not work, oh, and his Swindon erecting shop diorama. Oh, incredible. Oh, I, I think I've seen that one, mm. yes. Um, 
But uh, yeah, as Russell Benton says, a fool and his money are easily parted. Yeah. Which does beg the question how they got together in the first place. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, we saw something similar with the, the Backman uh, Southeastern and Chatham Railway C class as number 592. I remember that even then going as high as 550 at one point. And when you consider that that model brand new was only about £69, you could find it discounted. Oh, Warbler Production says the dark blue TARDIS is by the flagpole on the military establishment. No, it isn't. No, 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 no. I'm just looking. There is no TARDIS. There's no TARDIS up there, but I've moved the one that was on yeah. by the... Um... Yeah, and everybody's seen you move it. Oh, have they? Right. <laughs> yeah, because it's, uh, it's getting very hot up here, actually. How are you doing? I'm okay. Um, oh, I'm starting to flag, it has to be said. But, um, uh, yeah, Jerry BBR, absolutely. As long as people are willing to pay them prices, people will be willing to charge Price them. Has moved. Um, and um, somebody did say earlier on, I missed your comment to uh, name check you, but as Ken Patterson always says, it's the greatest hobby in the world. And it really is. So... Um, yeah, James Pett says, oh gosh, those Mark Wilson models are impressive. I think impressive is an understatement. They really are incredible. Big hello to Abby Watson. How are you doing? Hi, Abby. Uh, Raymond Legg says, it's cheaper to buy the starter set than to purchase the Pico BR118 diesel and the three Deutsche Reichsbahn gondolas separately. Loco is $180. Starter set is 110 so actually, I mean, it's, I've seen this as well with some of the Bankman sets in the UK that um, they do offer a great value for money um, insofar as uh, when you add up the individual price of costing up the contents, you get an incredible deal. And um, certainly one of the things that I highlight in uh, Wednesday's video, when you see that, we're on a bargain hunt, and one of the shops, I'm talking about the box sets that they've got. Um, and these are new old stock, and the prices, by modern standards, are incredibly keen. Uh, Abby Watson uh, says they're kind of bored, but playing my game. So, uh, that's okay. Joshua W56 says, everyone having a good day? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not too yeah. bad. White Wall Wheels 1 Hardcore MOH says you can always buy a Dorchester West Country for £95 and paint it purple and find someone to make number name tags. Although if it's a Hornby Double O Dorchester, they're quite valuable even in either themselves. Um, I, can, I can hear noises. Ginty Steam asks, Jenny, do Hi, you have Zoe. any rolling stock on the layout that was made from a kit? Oh, thank you so much. Are we doing videos today or not? I'm going to say not, based on how pooped you appear to be. It's, it's not that. Is it I'm hot not up exhausted. there? Wait. It's warm here. Yeah, I'm not exhausted. It's just that I kind of had to exert myself there, holding three cans in one arm, holding that, trying to keep it steady, while pulling myself up the stairs <laughs> with the other oh, arm. Yeah. Three you cans can multitask. Of coke. <laughs> three cans of Coke. Ooh, heavy. No, it was more the trying to pull my own body weight up the ladder with one arm. <laughs> Ooh, heavy. Yes. Uh, Ginty Steam says, Jenny, do you have any rolling stock on the land that was made from a kit? Thank um, you very much. Technically, there are, there, there's three things. Uh, one of which was made for me um, by uh, Melanie, my friend Melanie, um, and gifted to me as a birthday present. And the other two I bought ready-made, but they are kit-built. And they're actually on my disused siding. Um, You've also got a bus oh, yeah. and a Spitfire. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, technically there's a bus and a Spitfire. Where's the bus? Um, she stuck it in the corner. Yeah, it's over there, oh, under, the underneath in the, the yellow canopy. Where did you put the other TARDIS? We cannot find it, and neither can the viewers. <laughs> they can't find the TARDIS? I've just hidden one again, I think. Where is it? Ah. Did nobody spot that? Didn't, honestly, now, did nobody spot that? Because I didn't. Um, yeah, I think it's far, it, it is very, very hot in here. Hey, everyone said the PC would overheat doing videos. Uh, yeah, because to be honest, I'm getting quite hot. Is it warm downstairs? No. So it's cooled it's off a bit. down. Does it feel hotter or colder than usual up here? 
Is that extractor? It feels cooler than usual. The extractor fan is doing its job. So yeah, David, it's my mother. I don't believe tired us by signal on upper level of yeah. So somebody did spot it, and I I I was looking at the signal, and oh, oh that was so it. you guys it's not were by the signal. It's by you the, guys were doing better than it me. It was by then. the tunnel. Ah. Oh. Um, ben Tiller asks, is that Gandalf? Has he uh, managed to untangle uh, his uh, hat from the letterbox? Gandalf. Hello. Abe Monday Clover is never late, Frodo Baggins. <laughs> Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, Thanks Gandalf. Gandalf. You're welcome. <laughs> and if you could see me doing that, you'd think, wow, she's been dubbed. <laughs> A big hello to Wyvern Model Railway. Great to see you in. Not down Gandalf. Hang on. I, I kind of just uh, dropped Kate there, didn't I? You did what, sorry? <laughs> Professional wrestling. Uh, a, a professional wrestler that uh, drops the masquerade that it's all real it breaks kayfabe. That's the breaks what kayfabe. Kayfabe. The it's the uh, wrestling term for living the part. While you are a professional wrestler, you live the part. Is that in your contract then? Yeah. So basically, you if have you break kayfabe. It, it uh, undermines the whole illusion that they're going for. Yeah, the whole it. illusion that it's actually a sport. <laughs> yeah. When in fact it's more like it's um, actually a soap opera for boys. Yeah, Stevie film points out that Gandalf is late. <laughs> a Monday clubber is never late, Frodo Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, Thanks Gandalf. Gandalf. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Yeah, Mark Wilson says, who said late? <laughs> hey, Monday. No, Gandalf. No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay. Simon Train's Model Rowers Showcase says Gandalf is late. He's been sunbathing. Yeah, and he's he's got this. Um, he's all tanned, but he's got when he takes his uh, his uh, hat off, he's got a, a white like bowler bowler hat cut. That's me. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, Barnabas Junction asks Jenny, "Are you coming to crew this Saturday?" Unfortunately, so so busy at the moment. I don't think you could have. Mm. Be able to because you've got all stuff going on. It is very, very busy, and I am trying, trying desperately to You're very organize, trying, trying to, desperately to organise getting to the NMRA convention at St. Louis in the, oh, the I US. I told you, if you start swimming today, you might get there in time. <laughs> I like that. Ian Parker suggests put the PC down in the kitchen. You need longer PC wires up to the loft ladder for the video. Yeah. But that extra fan I put on really does help a lot. Uh, Dominic Z, our kickline correspondent. Hello there. Raymond Legs, do you know that Mattel released a, a Matchbox Jim Button themed gift set back in 2004? Um, no, I, I no, didn't. didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> no, we didn't. It was Jim Button. Uh, character. Don't know. We're really not up on uh, kickline. That's Which the thing. is why we have our kickline correspondent, Dominic yeah, we Z. Just don't know. Mm. We just don't know these things. He keeps us informed. So, excuse me. You're so excused. Uh, so when are you actually going to start your epic layout? I mean, what what's stopping you at the moment? Laziness. Motivation sometimes. But no, basically because of all the building work. It's as simple as that. Waiting. I've been waiting and waiting for builders to come and finish doing the last little bits of jobs mm. in the garage, which they've finally done now. There's only skirting board and stuff that had got to go in, mm. but it meant that I couldn't put the helix in the corner of the layout where it's going to go, and that's got to be there so I can pull the stuff out and get it back into the house. But the stuff can't go back into the house until all the other rooms are done. I mean, in the last month we've had a staircase put in, mm -hmm. we've had all upstairs. So um, it is progressing. It is progressing, but it's kind of two steps forward, one back, three forward, one back, two forward, one back. And I, we're supposed to be having the bathroom done. We've got a bathroom window that's been blocked up on the inside. There's a window on the outside, <laughs> but on the inside it's all breathed blocked up. That's all got to be plastered, but the shower's got to be pulled out because everything's been reconfigured. Mm -hmm. The builder has done what he can do at the moment. We've got a plumber booked in for the first week of August to come and do the bathroom for us, mm -hmm. but we can't get the plasterers and the other plumbers to come back and finish moving the, the radiators so it's, it's a bit like a domino. 
You can't mm -hmm. do one thing because it affects everything else, or a jigsaw, should I say. So basically, it's, it's like everybody's waiting on everybody yeah, else. And it, the builder that we've got is a very good builder, but during the time he's been with us, 14th of this month, he will have been in our house for five months. And in that time, we've got upstairs done and we've got a staircase in. In that same period of time, six houses have been built down the road. And people have already started to move in. So is that just in that that your builders are very good at wasting no, time? No, the, the thing the is, that the issue of course is that you can build a house from scratch, but much easier. You can't. You, can you could have all the tradesmen that want exactly, to go there yeah. and do that job. They're all on site. They're all on site. Um, yeah, getting them to come out to other individual places. Mm. And ours has been a bit of a hodgepodge of jobs. A lot of stuff needed doing to it, but the price has rocketed. When we quoted to begin with, we were going to be spending about. £32,000 to have everything done. Well, that was 2019 prices. That 32000 now is nearly 90000 Oh, my goodness. So it's like nearly tripled. Nearly tripled. Oh, oh, my word. We can't do anything about it. And the no. longer we wait, the more the prices are going up. Yeah. Breeze blocks, timber. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everything's expensive these days. Yeah. Not just model trains. Yeah. But a Cura Scale Deltix, though. £650. Well, I'd, I'd suggest you don't build a house out of Deltix. No. <laughs> yeah. Because what if someone buys them up and then they all just roll away? <laughs> and before anybody asks, no, I'm not Let's selling for my, the Deltic I've got. Give your motivation. She came to my house. She's good. <laughs> I do have motivation. It's just that sometimes, with all the things that have got to take precedence, Mm -hmm. It just means that the railway gets pushed further and further back. Are you alright there, Zoe? Have you got a drinking problem? No. I've got cramp. I had my uh, legs crossed and I've uh, got cramp in my ankle. Ooh! Mm. <laughs> so are we ready for the first video? We're going to try and show some of the videos that have been sent in. So, oh! Uh, Barnabas Junction asks, Jenny, would you kindly announce details for my live stream for tomorrow at 8pm? So that is Barnabas Junction doing a live stream tomorrow at 8 p.m. So uh, you find them on YouTube, Barnabas Junction. And Mark Wilson, Lurpak is, is oh, very expensive. Lurpak's so expensive that uh, people in the retro gaming communities that I'm in have been making uh, jokes with CEX uh, listings. Lurpak, we sell for £200. Yeah. <laughs> right, here we go. So the first one we've got is from Lee Holden. Okay, so and, here uh, we are. Ooh. He sent a message saying, please find attached my latest video of the 3F from the railway children's return at Worth Valley Railway. Of course, because the Hornby model's the 4F, but the locomotive actually in the film is the 3F. But I'm guessing that um, the, oh. the, the, the Hornby don't have a model of the 3F. This is looking good. Yeah. Don't bang your head on anything. Mm. So the TARDIS has been spotted on the turntable. This is the real thing. Yes, I know. At Keithley. Keith. So that's not Kaylee. No, it's Keithley, you muppet. It says Kaylee. It says Keithley. It's in Yorkshire. GH is an F. No, it's Keithley. It's, no, trust me, it's Keithley and Worth Valley Rail. It's Keithley. Gaily. No, it says Keith Lee. Now shut up, cupboard monkey. Oh, what did you? Tardis has moved again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is nice. <clears throat> mm. I can almost smell the smoke. Can you? No, that was Jenny doing the fun <laughs> earlier. Yeah. <laughs> that was the joke. Yes. <laughs> Jenny can't smell it, but because she's moved the extractor fan. There's a little bit of such that's the ancient such when when the the place was first built. It's kind of come in. It's weird that you were able to move that just so simply to get. Because I really am nice. really good at DIY. This yeah. is, a, is, that, is this the full ride on the line? I don't know, but I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that it's gone from being able to see it well to not in only a couple of minutes. The the dark is definitely coming in. So is this? L late at night, it looks like it's about to rain. Oh, do you remember rain? And James Petz does back me up. Jennifer is right about the pronunciation. I'm sure she is. I just like annoying her. Keith Lee. Keith Lee? Is, that, is he uh, associated with Peter Lee? Peter no. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> now, Peter Lee is a place named, literally yeah. named after a guy called Peter, yeah. whose surname was Lee. 
Yeah. I mean, it is lovely that they preserved this line because you you look at this and think if this line had been allowed to close and just get ripped up, this wouldn't have been possible in the slightest. This would have been completely gone, dug away, built on, breached. So this is the line that they use for the railway children film. Yeah, the the very new one, the new one. and the original one. Wow. It's nice that it's still... I think we don't do enough to hold on to our heritage. No. We do a lot better than a lot of other countries, it must be said. Yeah, but the biggest issue is we we grab hold of ancient stuff. We love Stonehenge. We love the castles from the Norman invasion. We don't love things that were built in the last hundred or so years. Like cooling towers. Yeah. And the problem with those is they've they got gas ones. The, yeah, the, the gas gasometers. Yeah. yeah. Gasometers. Oh, there must be, you'd have thought, thought there must be at least one set that's you'd been saved. You'd have thought saved. so, but from what I can tell, they're all gone. We don't save anything. That's what happens when you sell all the infrastructure to a private company that's motivated only by profit. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? The companies can't save things like that unless there's a profit in it for them. Because they're required by law to make money for their shareholders. It's not as it, uh, companies do donate things for preservation it has been known it's not impossible it's not impossible but there's got to be a monetary value in it for them and they can make a charge of do donation and reduce their tax liability that year that kind of thing that loco is working hard because look mm. look in it's um in the smoke plume you see the yeah. reflection of the flame and i'm not sure whether that's the firebox doors are open or whether that's literally blasting and what you're seeing is the reflection from the smoke box. Given uh, that we seem to be going along slowly with only a few uh, coaches that we can see, I'd expect mm. it left the doors open. Peter Jackson, Cheadle Heath, says Keithy and Worth Valley Rail was one of the early preservation railways. Late 60s. Um, I, I think 1968 rings a bell. No, it's uh, 2051, Jen. <sighs> <laughs> So, I've been sent some <laughs> details. Oh, Jen loves it. She sighs, but she loves it. That is really nice. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Coming into Holt now. There we go. Oil of bird! Oil of bird! Oil of bird! What am I doing with my life? I don't know. If you don't know, <laughs> nobody else knows, it has to be said. I don't know how you guys have coughed, I'm drenched in sweat from just being up here. I must say, I'm starting Thank to really Thank you so much flag. for pressing. If you can press it over, Jen. Ready out. Press and see button seats. I'm just trying to... That was really great. Thank you so much. Yeah, firebox doors open, even slightly will give that effect, says David Scott. So yeah, I think you're right. So thank you so much, Lee Holden, for sending that in. That was really nice. Okay, what we got? So, oh, um... Okay, um, we've got a message here from George Langstaff. He says, uh, something that you might enjoy, a homemade Mr. Jolly's chocolate factory wagon. Can't see Backman making these, so he made his own. He hasn't sent a link, though. That would have been, it would have been great if we'd have the, the link, but never mind. He also says, next day of a good bit of fun, you saw my cattle wagon with the sound on a DC layout. Well, mm -hmm. I've upgraded the cattle wagons to circus wagons. Oh! That sounds lovely. So uh, the paint scheme was fun. Is it cows? Is it sheep? Is it goats? Right, so I've just posted up in the chat uh, Barnabas Junction um, is sixth live stream. I think it's epi uh, ser sorry, series six, episode 12. Um, and they're having a giveaway for win tickets for the 2022 DRS Open Day. Nice. Join the live discussion for a chance to win. And we've just posted up the link there. So ben Tullett says, I like evening running on steam railways. Autumn galas are soon upon us, and the Seven Valley Railway may be doing all night running again. Oh, that would be lovely. Richard Swiderski confirms Keithley and Worth Valley Railway, June 1968. Uh, and you're welcome, Barnabas Junction. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you for sending that message, George. Uh, there's no link, but uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. So, uh, so next thank up, you so much. We have, where is it? Where have we got? It always gives us that message from Paul Till. <laughs> I don't know why. This is Skipsy Trains, I think it is. Yeah, it is. It's Skipsy Trains. Oh. So, uh, I'm going to grab this. If you can grab it as well and uh, 
Press the button. Okay, we we good. Uh, wait for it to go full screen first. Uh, is it playing? So Should this be. is AC Electrics at Skipsy Tricks. I love this viaduct. Four track viaduct. So we've got here a message. He says, uh, good afternoon, Jenny and Zoe. Good afternoon. I hope you're all well. Based on the temperature down here, I wouldn't be surprised if the Monday Club doesn't come from Weir Yard, or if it does, it won't last long. Suffice to say, I didn't see Skipsy this weekend because of the weather. Sorry to hear that. Jen didn't see Weir Yard because uh, someone was uh, at the power station was having a strike. <laughs> However, I did manage to get some filming done last weekend and put together shots of some of my AC electric locomotives in action. Suffice these look to like say, past nineties. Could be. Suffice to say, these are all. There, there are still many more locomotives to film, so at some point there'll be an AC locomotive part two. Well, thank you for sending this in. I always love this layout because oh, that's an eighty-seven on Mark threes. It's a four-track viaduct and I, with the junction on it and everything. I really like it. This layout is all about watching trains yeah. run. That. Is that an eight? That's an eighty-six um, in res livery with a full res train of uh, super BGs. I think that's an eighty-six. Uh, Peter Jackson says that looks a bit like Jason's Bridge on Barnum's Junction. Huh. 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 I, I, I love the rounded top on that building that we just saw there. Oh, I've the like signal that, box, the Art Deco like kind of yeah. Deco style. There's another 86 on a container train. Not big on the containers, but I do like the 86s. So, uh, really nice. That's and they run superbly. From uh, Raymond Legs, ATT was Trian's brand of trains in America. Wow, how interesting. I did not, I know, did not that. know that, yeah. Right, oh, my word, Raymond Legs has tried to find trying trains on eBay, but some people want nearly $600 per train set. My God. Same thing with Tyco. Why oh, does the riverbank? In the riverbank. Yeah. Oh, I just saw it. <laughs> I didn't see what he did there. Oh, look, it's, it's your technique with the, the layers of the foam yeah. to make the scenery. Mm. So um, it, it, it works really effective. well. It's strong and it's light. So, oh, what's that? Bridge. Ah, it's um, DBSO with the 86 on the other end. How well do they propel? I must admit, accidentally sometimes I set the trains going the wrong way and don't notice. And actually, they run surprisingly well. But um, do I should I write uh, forward with an arrow underneath all of your things so you know? It's not quite like that. Sometimes they get confused and set off in the wrong direction. You mean sometimes you get confused no, and set them off in the wrong direction? Sometimes the NCE does. See this? A poor workman blames their tools. <laughs> but sometimes it is justified. So. Um, Lima Channel was this nice layout and reminds me of Manchester with the high level lines everywhere. Yeah, it really is a nice layout. It's yeah. fun to just watch it. It always makes me think of um, oh the the Great Western Main Line out of London, where it crosses over the Thames near um wanna say Marlow, but I, it's not Marlow. I have to admit, when we went last went to London, we were looking at those uh, bridges mm -hmm. and how they sat in the water. Oh, I was 90. amazed at the engineering. Yeah, I thought it was like loco, and then I realised it's a container train, but the, the, most of the wagons <laughs> are empty. So uh, it's a lovely layout. It really it, is. It's great for just watching trains go by. It's almost hypnotic, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. End up with the same as this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You end up just sitting and letting your eyes just glaze mm. as the things move. Maidenhead. And uh, yeah, Simon Trains Mother Row Showcase, absolutely. Maidenhead. That's it. Skipsy Trains is the DBSOs run well, especially with the bar coupling. The only problem is the tension lock couplings on the Hellion 86, I can imagine. Oh, it wasn't a TARDIS look. It's a little blue. Uh, oh, it's a little bin. Egg Rider, Unless Sounding Arch Maidenhead. Maidenhead. Yeah. <laughs> James Pett says there's a massive echo under that bridge. I bet you there is. 
Well, yeah. Like go under that bridge. Maidenhead. Everybody say Maidenhead. So not Marlow. They go under that bridge. <laughs> it's like having two of it's us. the cupboard monkey. <laughs> the cupboard monkey's got that another was brilliant. monkey. Thank you so much for sending that. Absolutely, in thank you for that. Oh, Stevie Film points out it's the flattest brick arches in the in the world. Ah. Okay, we've got two more, so we'll be running a little over today, Jen, if you don't mind. Don't get Mother Rower says Hellion pre-fitted all the buffer beam detail. Makes for a great shelf queen, but not a practical layout level. <laughs> I tend to, I, I, as a compromise, I take off the detail at one end and fit the coupling, you but leave it at the it. other. In fact, you've, you have seen how she does it in some of her videos, where she just takes a, a set of uh, snippers to it. Oh, I'm starting to flag in this heat up here. I know. Two more. Okay, oh. we may have just started to jump a little bit, but here we go. Oh, is somebody saying that we're no, getting the slideshow? No, I just that Control V didn't work very well. So this one is from Henry Van Meek. Ah. So have you pressed... En uh, route button? to Waterclue from Bloemfontein. Cool. The Trans Karoo. So this is South Africa. And uh, we've seen this layout a few times. And th this is good because it's, it's on multi-levels in his oh, basement. Oh, it's amazing. So this is one which I think Les, um, you'll find quite yeah. inspiring. So Henry sent a, a message as well. Mm -hmm. says, uh, hello Zoe and Jenny. Here's uh, my latest video of two passenger trains running up my layout. This is in video series showing all the trains that normally run during an operating session. So this should be, oh my goodness, that back scene. I love that steam locomotive there as well. That is So many South something. African models I really do like. Because obviously you just don't get them over here. You never see them yeah. over here in the UK. Skipsy Trains says that I struggle to fit buffer beam details, so I prefer to have it pre-fitted and I can remove what isn't necessary. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I must admit, uh, yeah. Alan Reynolds, PVA Jacob Alan, uh, great to see you. Good evening, Jenny, Zoe and Cliff. Watching from a warm loft. Yeah, I uh, uh, Broadcasting from a warm loft as regards PVA J Clive Allen at Buckland Junction. Uh, what's that one at the bottom? Is that the signal box that was operated by a chimpanzee? Oh, there was one, wasn't there? A trained uh, monkey. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's some funny stuff that goes on on railways. Uh, in Japan, there's a, a, a train ticket uh, guy who's a cat. Oh. And he just lives there. And he's well, hardly pool and everything. <laughs> Hartlepool had a, how was it, the, the monkey? For oh, they spy. hung a monkey, didn't they? Because they thought it was a French spy. <laughs> they, yeah, that, that's what happens up in Hartlepool, apparently. Yeah, they're strange people there. They still <laughs> are. So do they, so I take it they've, ne they've never, ever met anybody from France then? Where I, did the monkey come from? Off a shipwreck. Huh. I don't think it actually happened, because... No one's that stupid, surely. Oh, I don't know. It's hardly cool. <laughs> oh, them's fighting words. Yeah, yeah. let's fight. Mmm, they're fighting words. I do love this layout. I do. And again, it's a great meandering layout for watching trains. Valley's 56XX says he thinks it was a baboon. Yeah, no, it could, could be. have been. Did, to be honest with you, did I have a bright really, red bottom. I'm not really good at identifying different monkeys. Yeah. Actually, no, you shouldn't say monkeys. They're great apes, most of them. Uh, I think we're going to have to make this the last one. I am Fair starting enough. to feel ill. Well, we'll keep the other ones for next time. Then. We've gone all right, considering... Uh, oh, my you... goodness. Look how steep that is. Oh, yeah. This is the incline he uses from one layer uh, level to the next. Wow. I would see, there's no sign of any um, things like uh, power base on that. It must that. just be a very powerful locomotive. It's got good grip, probably traction tyres. But there you see, that's now on wow. the upper level. That's an amazing I can, I can see you mentally making notes. Yeah, the thing I is, it's got a that. huge expanse of It's area. a big cellar, a very yeah. big cellar. I think it's a cellar. It might have been a garage, actually. I'm not sure if the cellar, I, can, I think I see windows at the back. Keith Lothry says the volume is too low. I think you might want to turn your volume up because um, nobody else is We complained. tested the uh, levels and they were fine. Yeah, yeah. There's a monkey currently living in number 10. Is there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Kev McKay, 85. 
<laughs> Kev McKay 85 says it was a shipwreck during the Napoleonic War and it was ship's monkey from the wreck of a French warship. That was it. Me hanged So, um, I've been asked, is this Henry Van Wyck? Yes, it is. It is, yes. You can tell that regular viewers of the show will recognise. So it's the Orange Express arriving at... It's amazing. I, I, I missed the name. That's my excuse for not pronouncing. Mm-hmm. Alfonso La Pulsa says, have to be off now. See you next week. You take care. Thanks yeah, for coming along. Forward to seeing. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so this Simon... has been great. I really is. But it is seven minutes, so I'm thinking we stop there, Jen. Uh, Ralph... Thanks for that, Jen, guys. Ralph Davy. Okay, so um, Ralph Davy says it was a baboon. Station master trained it to pull signal and point levers. Was that, was that somewhere like in, um, somewhere out in um, one of the, one of the colonies? You. Could be, but it's, like, it's amazing what you can do. Dongit's mother row asks, "What scale is this?" Um, it's actually, I believe, it's HO. I think he has mentioned that before. Mm. Yes. And Valley's 56XX says, good to see other country models. So just got time for... That's one of the things I mm. love about the Monday Club. Absolutely. But look, it's been great having your company on this incredibly hot day. The extractor fan has helped a lot, yeah. but it's not a panacea. And a panacea is a good word, so I have written it down. And as you can hear, I am using it a lot in everyday conversation. But look, you guys take care, stay safe, keep hydrated. And we will have a video on Wednesday on a bargain hunt. That's right. I'm going to be helping you out to find the very Are you best. Going to paint your face on... orange? No, <laughs> no, I'm not getting the David Dickinson tan. But uh, certainly, I'm going to help you out and find the very best in new old stock. And it... what's that noise? Sound like somebody banging on the door. Didn't hear it. Um, the very best in new old stock, and also where to get some great night, fanciful bargains. But it's so great to have Les back in the in the house. I better get back into that job right now. Until yeah, you, for you, the next six months. Yeah, you need to. You get whittling. <laughs> but um, it's been actually no seriously. In all seriousness, it's well, been great to have you back. Thank on. you very much. Have, have, you, have you enjoyed yourself? I have, I have, have you enjoyed have. myself. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just yeah. amazed at how long these locomotives want... have been going round. Do you want to gamble for the star prize? We've got a speedboat. Do you live in Tamworth? Yeah, you can have a speedboat on a trailer. And some patio furniture. Two in a bed or whatever they say. Bully, bully beef. Yeah, everybody everybody loves a bit of bully. (laughs) But look, until next time, you guys take care. And if you haven't already done so, do please tickle the like button. Share the stream to social media. A really great way of helping out the channel to grow. And subscribe if you've not already done so. And um, also don't forget that you can check out the all-new second-ever exclusive Monday Club wagon, which is uh, exclusively commissioned from KR Models and is one of their all-new Pell Bricks, which is due in the around uh, the beginning of September, all going well. And you can order that with confidence Hi, through Rails of Shepherd. And also, if you're still around at 10 o'clock on the Game Hammer channel, oh, yes, we've yeah. got the uh, Monday Night Live show. And do you want to share a link? The Monday I Night I've got a link, I'll put it in the Facebook group. So look out in the Facebook group and the Cupboard Monkey will be sharing the link to invite you to join her from 10 tonight for the Anything Goes Game Hammer live stream and chat. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Coates, saying you take great care of yourself. Bye for now. Bye to everybody. Take care. Bye for now. Yeah, there really isn't a thing. There is. Hey, I've got it. So I'm going to just add it to the... uh... Right, I'm just going to, before we go, I'm just hold on because uh, I'm putting the link in now. Oh, get off my screen, advert. (laughs) How dare you. You know, we're supposed to be in the bit where we just show the trains running. Yeah, well, you know. There we go. Okay, take care, guys. Have a great evening. Bye for now. Train now departing is the 2108 service to Grove Street Yard, calling at Bolton Trinity Road. I need to go for some reason. 
some of my hair. Else, that Jenny didn't know. But she made the layout and we shared photographs of one episode one time. You remember it. A day not on a Tugaroo Street Yard. That is... By a minute that is, I forgot that one. That is, the 2108 service Tugaroo Street Yard. You got up to the lock today, sure I got big ticky eyes. You got up to the lock today, you'll never believe your eyes. For every train there ever was, the scattered there together because today's the day that Jenny does the money they call. Good night. Good night, everybody. Yes. Great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever thought of having a station? Yeah, I tried it, not really for me. Anyway, good night everybody, because no matter how many times I hint, Les won't stop talking. <laughs> bye. bye! Take care, bye!